Hi, friends. Welcome back to Live at the Roxy. Uh, without that musical intro today, because it just didn't feel quite like the tone of the show, um, we are going to be talking a lot today about everything going on with the peaceful protests and Black Lives Matters. And the reason uh, that we really wanted to do this show today is so that we can fundraise. But we'll talk all about that in a second, because before I do that, introducing my amazing guest, Winston Marshall. Clapping for well, you, man. Thank you. I claps to everybody that's here and, and anybody that uh, is out uh, fighting um, to stop all of this violence, um, especially against black bodies. It's been a rough. I mean, it, it's 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 always happening. But obviously, these last couple of weeks, starting with the Maude Aubrey up until where we are now, have just been a lot, um, especially in the middle of a pandemic. But, you know, uh, so I've been saying that it feels like it's been an especially rough last couple of weeks, but I don't know that that's actually true because when I look at any kind of timeline or statistics, it seems like it's been a rough century. Um, a r- <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, we are also in a pandemic right now, but I think that there is uh, there are a lot of people at home paying attention and that are just more aware than ever, but that doesn't mean that the problem has started now. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, it's been, I, I I can't even say it's been a rough few weeks. It's been a rough, it it seems like it's been a rough forever. Um, It's, it's, you're, you're, you're not wrong. I I think it's okay to acknowledge the fact that the last couple of weeks have been especially bad. I think again, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of people about the fact that this police violence thing, this police brutality and everything else that's been this war on black people, hasn't changed really it's certainly gotten better than it was back in the day but it's still very bad the difference is we have everybody has a camera now everybody has the internet so everybody is able to record this shit and that's why out of nowhere you you know you see um like the video of Ahmaud Aubrey, then you turn around and see the, I, I cannot remember the young man's name, it's driving me crazy, but there was a dude that was killed on Facebook Live um, that was like, granted, he, they were trying to pull him over, but he got scared and he like let a car chase away. Right, uh, he, um, really, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You guys will let us know in the chat, thank you. Uh, yeah. And and how how telling is that, that there are so many names that, it's hard to even recall some of them at this point, yeah. which is. Yeah. And then, so, so that's, that's the thing is that at this point we are made even more aware of it right now because we can see, we can physically see it. It's why Rodney King started up what it did in the nineties, because that wasn't a thing that the internet wasn't a thing yet. And, and yeah, dude had a big ass homeschool ass like camcorder that he happened to pull out. And that was the first time that we had seen that. So that all of a sudden, triggered shit in people um yeah uh, being able to physically see things um today when i was asking you if you thought there was because i knew that we wanted to fundraise but i didn't know there's just so many places to start and um i obviously george floyd being a huge um reason that the protests are going on right now and somebody that of course we want to donate to so half the proceeds are going to george floyd but the one that you uh really wanted to highlight again talking about footage is philando castile who i mean i i don't think many of us can forget seeing the footage of his girlfriend and um the cops and everything that took place and her just live streaming the entire time no matter what i mean um yeah that one that one that one killed me. There's the reason why I specifically asked you to have the other half of the proceeds go there was because um so what would that have been? That would have been 2016, I believe. Yeah, 2016. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, Alton Sterling had happened like a day or so prior. Um, and then the the whole thing with Philando happened right after. It seems a lot of these happen in pairs. So in this case, it was what Amon uh the Amy Cooper thing happened, and then we heard about George Floyd right after, but um anyway super thing being the central park the central park dog. Yeah, lady, mm-hmm. which is which a lot of people pointed out by the way that the comparisons that they happen within the same day of each other that amy cooper was attempting to have done to christian cooper not related but the black man that she right. was calling the cops on what they did to george floyd she right. was very aware that what her phone call had the potential to do was exactly what happened to George Floyd. It's why she did it. But and again, um, the re- only reason we know is because of the footage. Right. 
So I, I asked specifically for Philando because uh, 2016, Alton Sterling happens. Like I'm shook just like every single type of black person's killed. But then Philando happens. And the reason why is, you know, you see the whole thing where he's lets the officer know, hey, I do have a legal firearm. Uh, it is registered. It's over here. I'm going to get the information you need, et cetera, et cetera. And the cop still shoots him. And, and the reason why is because my parents always told me growing up, they were like, don't fight cops. Don't don't push back. Like comply and come home. They were like, we we have the resources uh, as far as like lawyers and connections in law enforcement and everything else that we will deal with it after the fact. But you comply with what the cop is saying. You you peacefully like take the, all the mental notes you need and then come home and we'll deal with it. So to and see that's what Philando did so exactly. Complied. So seeing him fully comply and still get murdered train wrecked me because it sounds weird but that's like at kind of the core of what my parents taught me of how to deal with this and you've essentially just taken everything that i was raised to believe and threw it in the fucking trash and so i it really destroyed me i was down for like a good week where i just couldn't talk to anybody i just went into a full-blown depression and then what came out the other end of it was a show that i did for roughly about a year called positive black people news uh, actually precursor to some good news ironically uh, they and stole your idea. Where are the royalties? I, that's what I'm saying. And you go sell to CBS. I ain't get no money. But um, essentially, the show was uh, and uh, was essentially, I would find positive news stories about Black people, uh, and I would just report it like it was the Daily Show. So we'd be cracking jokes and all sorts of stuff, and like we're characters essentially delivering this news. But the idea behind it was that this constant narrative of seeing all these black bodies murdered that were victims or that were, uh, you know, criminals or anything else like that, or that we're all Beyonce's and LeBron. So we're just here to entertain you. Like you can't right. to just see that narrative will completely unravel. Like it'll make all the racists think all the bullshit that they think, and it'll make black people not see their own worth to just see themselves as, 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 as victims essentially. And so um, that was the point of the show. Uh, we went for like a good year. We like found some funding to go for a while, and then life got kind of hectic. Oh, I was I was told before the show that Winston has some uh, some Wi Fi things. So we heard you say life got hectic. <laughs> life, uh, okay, am I am I back? Hectic. Yeah, you're back. You're okay. with us now. Anybody, anybody that watches Blurs in the Hood or Game Time knows that this is a running joke that my internet loves to go out right when I'm making a super solid point or like a really exciting moment. I mean, like, I was into it, but it, it was kind of <laughs> ironic that you say hectic and the internet's like, oh, we hear you hectic. Yeah, let's <laughs> give you hectic. Uh, uh, but yeah, life got kind of crazy. So I couldn't, I couldn't continue it up. Like we had a studio, we lost that, stuff like that. So, but um, it will look a little bit different, but I am proud to announce that I am going to be reviving Positive Black People News. It's oh, I love I'm that. All That's amazing. My, all of my energy into this coming week to get it off the ground. If I can get an episode up this week, I can. If not, I will be back uh, as early as the following week. Um, Where are you going to put it? Do you have? Do you uh, know? I, we we have a positive Black People News YouTube channel. I will share that around uh, so that Great. people know where to go for that because um, we did have like a pretty decent following before. Uh, so before check out his Twitter because he'll tweet it out. I'm sure. Oh, wow. I will uh, for sure. And let everybody know. Speaking of tweeting things out, thank you guys all for being here today and for telling your friends about this stream. I'm already seeing donations come in, uh, support come in, and I love that. And we will get to every one of these in the Super Chat, in the Stream Labs, and in the Patreon. Um, every dollar, all the proceeds are going to a good cause today. So make sure that you guys are donating, are supporting, and doing everything that you can. Uh, I want to read some of these comments getting to the top of this uh, Larry Lease, you telling people to hit that like button today is a, for an even better cause than it usually is. So he also says, Winston, you are the man. Love you, dude. Appreciate uh, that, Larry. Winston is the man. I don't know anybody <laughs> who dislikes Winston. So That's uh, sweet, guys. I appreciate that. I, I you know it's funny because I run into I run into the occasional troll here and there uh, who Let uh, me at him. Yeah, no, right. And I, the funny thing is, is some of them are fans that I've like gotten from Collider or Schmodown or anything else like that. And I'm aware that not everybody has the same political beliefs, but if I'm out here telling you that like I'm hurting and my people are dying and you want to chat, check that. I, <laughs> I said this to you before we started and I see plenty of people say this. So it's not like I'm the genius genius who originated this, but it's not, it's not a fucking opinion. 
It's not a fucking opinion. There's nothing to check. <laughs> um, like Black Lives Matters, period. Black li- Black Lives Matter, period. End of sentence. Period. There is no, yeah, but, however, yes, and there's, it's just, there's not a conversation. And um, yeah. I, I'm the- sick of people trying to have a conversation around that when that's, that is, that is the sentence. I agree. And I, I, the funny thing is, is that people love to say things like all lives matter or, you know, when you start talking about like women's rights, so like pro-life, like anybody comes up with a counter argument because they're trying to invalidate you. Not right. because necessarily they believe in the thing that they're saying, because for example, um, while this is happening, you don't see all any of these all lives matter people coming out of the woodwork and being like, look, I said all lives matter and I mean it and this is bullshit. Nobody is saying that. It's literally once we say Black Lives Matter because we're tired of being killed that they want to speak up and say some shit just to counter us. It's the same thing that happens with women where women will say something about men and then all of a sudden you tell these dudes, well, not I don't, not all men do that. Bitch, it's not what we're talking about. If you didn't do it, we're not talking about you right now. Right. There's this TikTok that came out like literally perfectly explaining this Winston. It's this girl. um, I wish I could give her credit right now. I'll, I'll find her name, but she is standing there. There's a house burning behind her. And uh, somebody comes up to her and says, oh, what are you doing? And she says, oh, I'm going to go put out this fire and go save my friends because their house is burning. And then the person standing in front of their their house goes, what about my house? And she says, is your house on fire? And they say, no, but my house still matters. And she's like, "Uh, nobody said your house didn't matter. This one's just like on fire. So people are dying in this house. So I'm going to go help that house. Yeah, but my house matters, right? Yeah, like, yes, bitch, your house matters. Go <laughs> go matter in your own house. But it, it's so true. Like, one of these houses is on fucking fire and people are dying. Right. So that's the house that we need to put out the fire for. Why right. Why don't people see that? I, I Yeah, the one that, the one that, like, a very similar explanation that, that someone did for me that was a good counter to it was, like, you go to the doctor. You're like, yo, doc, my arm's broken. I fell out of a tree. My arm's broke. He goes... Yeah, okay. Well, uh, you know, cancer's pretty bad. So we're gonna do a cancer scan. Whoa, whoa, I came because my arm is broken. Can we just get like a cast and then we can talk about cancer screens? Nah, cancer is nothing to fuck with. All right. They're like all diseases matter. Well, okay, cool. But, but my, my arm. arm. <laughs> but my arm. Like, yeah. let's, first things first. Um, getting to more of you guys, Josh Bing says, Thank you for standing. Uh Thank you for standing with you guys to see people in film television space that I watch and support every day. Support us means more than, you know, uh, thank you, Josh, for your support. We really appreciate that. Going to Lewis Cox who says, Hey Roxy, this has been a rough man. Rip George Floyd. Uh, yeah, this has been a rough. This, yes. Um, why do you, Winston, what do you think? Why do you think right now? Do you think it is because of our leadership? Uh, if you can even call it leadership, do you think it is because of uh, what? I, I can't even suggest other things. What do you think is going on that right now it seems to be the worst time we've had in so long? Uh, I think it's a combination of so much stuff. I mean, I think you have the fact that, like, again, this has been a prevalent issue throughout. Uh, this is something we've been dealing with forever. But you're dealing with the fact that you have a a uh, president right now who seems to, in, whether he enjoys it or not, he loves to antagonize um and whether that's against the media or anybody that doesn't agree with him or whatever it is he loves to antagonize um and that has a tendency to also oh uh-oh, i went out again oh no you're still there i'm just oh. fucking annoyed oh. not <laughs> what you're saying. i'm just making noises because yeah the yes well, what and, you're saying. and that's yeah. the thing is you like anything else whether people admit it or not we are directly we are directly uh like what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, influence. We're directly influenced by the shit that we see, whether or not we not like I, I hate Trump personally. I mean, I've never, I've never held back on that. I, I don't like the man at all. And I think he's a fucking problem, but if we're being honest again, he's still the president that word subconsciously rings true. And so all of us have a tendency right. to get a little bit more antagonistic because we're seeing the example of that. If you notice, it's not to say bullshit didn't happen when Barack is in office, but it never really got to this insane level of like people like fighting each other since Trump kind of came on the scene. Um, and do you so think that the pandemic has anything to do with that or do you does. think that, okay. 
It does. I, so that was that was the, my next point. So the first part is you have leadership that's showing this antagonistic side. The second part of it is the like, which also trickles down. Someone said the media as well. It trickles down to the media. They already kind of had their issues, but like it trickles down. If he's going to push, they're going to push back until this fight, this war breaks out. But then you look at the pandemic. It has destroyed people financially. Like I know that you obviously had the financial stuff go down with Collider and went out at the start of the year. And then the pandemic kicks in. And for both of us, all of a sudden money becomes a huge fucking issue. Right. Um, right. Like you think you're going into a year solid, but. And then, and then you're not. So that makes shit crazy. Then you're not sure. Uh, you're not sure about whether or not, you know, um, this, this disease is real or not because it's bouncing around the internet. You kind of hear something coming from China. Trump doesn't really acknowledge it at first. We're not really sure what's going on until it becomes a full blown, like worldwide pandemic. And we realize how serious this disease is. So now people are scared for their lives. Their financial situations are upheaved. And then you have a situation where you're now have nothing to do. You're already at a breaking point and you have nothing to do. And you just see people getting murdered. Right. <laughs> like, like, and I, I put out, I said this on blurbs last week and I tweeted it again uh, uh, yesterday or two days ago, mainly because a fan had posted about how it really rocked him and he saw everything very differently. I just said, I wish that COVID-19 was all I had to worry about. I, right. I genuinely wish that because I, like the simple fact that last night my girlfriend lives very close to a police station, um, which is dangerous in and of itself. And she was scared because she heard random like explosions and shit happening outside because people were doing what they were doing. I wanted to drive down there and like be with her to make sure she was fine. But obviously with the curfew and especially being a black, I was like, I had like, even though I had like an hour before the curfew was in effect. I called her and I was like, I'm really sorry. Unless like you're genuinely like life threatened in trouble. And I know you understand this. I have to stay put because right. I could be in some serious, like in order to get to you, I have to go through some of these places where these curfews are in full effect. And I have no idea what could happen to me. It may yeah. be worse to go down to you than it would be to come. So like, unless you hit me up and you're like, please come right now. I have to stay put. Like you, you just have to be brave. And, and she understood and she was fine with it. It just really, hurt me again <laughs> like I'm, i don't get to live a full life i have to live a a muted one it doesn't always happen that way uh, i'll be i'll be honest but it is some that's that's all when people say privilege whether it be white male whatever the fuck all they're saying is you have the privilege of not having to worry about certain things you have a privilege to do yeah. certain things and not be an issue like right now there is a healthy body able body privilege for a lot of people in the pandemic that they can go to the grocery store that they can go to a protest, they can do shit like that, but there are people that are immunocompromised that may not be able to leave their house until a vaccine comes out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yes, that, of course. That's all that fucking means. So anybody that wants to get up in arms about white privilege, all that shit means is if you get pulled over by a cop, you're not worried about what could potentially happen. You're just like, I'm gonna get a fucking ticket, damn it. I have to worry about, okay, when I go for my, my registration in my glove box, that he is very aware of the fact that I am just going for my registration. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I, I had to majorly check my privilege last night because I was sitting, I'm, I'm in the heart of where the um, peaceful protests started and where the police forced those peaceful protests to become riots. And so outside of my place are burning cars and um, rubber bullets. And like, I'm, you know, I'm just in the heart of it. I'm in the central location where that is and i last night felt so afraid and just to be abundantly clear not afraid of black people afraid of the fucking police and afraid of these these crazy psychopaths who are doing things that are making it seem like the people who are peacefully protesting are doing these things because they want it to look like people are lighting things on fire and are and are um, flipping cars and are beating each other when really it's people who aren't part of the the movement that are coming in to do that. Those are the people I'm afraid of because of what they can do. And I was sitting here scared and I was like, a time to be a big girl rocks because you're, you feel afraid right now. You have no idea what it feels like to feel afraid every fucking day. And 
yeah, it was a little scary. And I was like, I feel so lucky that I am feeling afraid one night of my life. Yeah. That's and, very fucking lucky. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I, you know, um, that's the thing that's also so interesting about this. You're seeing a lot of reports and I give a lot of police the credit that are doing this. A number of them are the, they're acknowledging a lot of the people they've been arresting uh, for rioting are not even from within, let alone the state, the city. They're literally right. people coming from outside of these areas just to create chaos, to take something that has been very peaceful to try and do something and, 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 make it worse and the funny thing is any black person that i know that has been in a situation of writing I, while i don't condone destroying shit, i fully understand if you've spent your entire like think think about it the way you they people talk about like cornered animals and it's shitty that i have to compare us to that but the truth is if you've spent your whole life terrified that you could go at any fucking second and then right. you get pushed over the edge are you surprised someone's swinging back? Like I, I just, I wouldn't repost the video cause I didn't need people to have more trauma, but there was a guy who was out. He asked the cops some questions. They were about to attack him and his girlfriend came running out with the camera and like, you know, he wasn't resisting. He was just kind of chilling there. They suck a dog on him. Would not get like, I guess. Oh no, the, the point it's again. Over. Oh, the point yeah. it's always the point it's always <laughs> the point but i think um, i get what you're saying they, they sucked this dog yeah. they, they they sent this dog on this guy right. and didn't pull him off and to, either because they wanted him to suffer or they didn't train the dog well enough which is also a fucking problem but he wasn't resisting the whole fucking time and was threatening the girlfriend with a taser when all she was doing was filming the whole thing like yeah. that's that's the shit like fuck people that say there's, there's propaganda if you want to say that shit maybe about some other shit going on in the protest as far as right like whatever but like as far like i am telling you that i'm suffering and instead you want to tell me that i'm spinning my wheels that i'm playing a race card that i like this all bullshit oh the frozen up bullshit but yes i'm with you <laughs> uh and and i will say to the people um most of you guys in the chat right now are being amazing and all of you guys i know have great hearts and intentions but to the people who are talking about they know some good police officers and they've seen police officers save lives again it's kind of similar to the all lives matter thing nobody is saying that every single police officer is bad and nobody is saying that that uh, flipping cars and burning buildings is the best thing to do. That's not what people are saying. Um, and I have police officer friends as well. And some police officers are great. There's a lot of them who aren't. And like Winston's saying, it's not that you are condoning the flipping of uh, or harming other things, but you get it. And I I don't know that I can fully get it the way that you get it, but I certainly get it too. Uh, how could you not feel angry? How could you not? You would have to be crazy to not feel angry. So continuing on in here with some of these um, super chats and streamlabs, Gregory Castillo, thank you for the support. Appreciate that. Also coming in here, um, Eric says, as a non-American looking at this from the outside, I'm shocked the way the police are handling this is by being thugs. What WTF watch footage for hours on Reddit and it's hard to believe stay safe all. Um, yeah. Like how can you watch that footage and not feel sick? I mean, in, in every city we're watching yeah. cops just like kick the, the living crap out of people who are peacefully protesting even here, I mean, Winston, we haven't gotten into this yet, but I know that you were part of the peaceful protest yesterday. Uh, what was your experience like? How was it? Um, well, I first want to give uh, my girlfriend, Kristen, uh, a lot of credit. Um, for those that don't know, she's white. And so like, I, she was the one that actually suggested we go in the first place. Um, a lot of it had to do with the fact that like, uh, on Friday, uh, I decided both because it was a big birthday for her and I wanted her um, to, you know, be able to have some joy in her life, considering, again, everything that's going on right now. Right. But I also poured myself into that event for her because 
I was just so exhausted and so sad and so upset. I needed something positive myself and seeing her happy was going to be good. And so where I give her a lot of credit is that night she was like, hey, there's a there is a protest tomorrow and I, I would love to go. I think we should go. And I was like, yeah, we should do it. It was so it was her idea that she even knew that it was happening and we went and it was incredible. Um, it Did really was have conversations, Winston, about like we are in a pandemic. What do we, how do we stay safe? There is no way to stay safe at all right now in general, but what is, did that even come up or did it not cross your minds? Um, uh, it's sort of, I mean, we obviously wore masks and stuff like that. I had mentioned something when we were walking, I was like, oh shit, we're definitely going to have to get tested after this just because it is a shit ton of people all in one place. And it's another thing that I tweeted. I was like, or I retweeted somebody and then posted on Facebook that, all of this is important and and these need to happen right now but for everybody that did to go get tested at least if your city's offering it because garcetti has decided to cancel testing for the time being uh which seems like a very vindictive move but i i saw that what was that i think i saw that yesterday because we did have testing for everybody at any time that you wanted and then i saw yesterday that he had um, canceled testing for yesterday. Is that indefinitely? Uh, it's yeah. Until he, until he changes. Otherwise he originally said it, he was stopping it for safety sake because of the protests. But then in a follow-up press conference, it, he made it, I, I don't want to misquote him, but like reading what he said, specifically reading the transcript, it, his words come off as he's being vindictive as in like, we're not going to reward bad behavior. And it's like, fuck you. This isn't uh, testing. Isn't a treat that we get. Okay. <laughs> like this yeah. is to make sure people will, like stay safe and stay alive. So my sex ed teacher one time, because we were being rowdy in class, refused to teach us how to use condoms. It felt like, a, like you're, you're being a little emotional, you, need to, you know, you can't really f fight that with that, but okay. Uh, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. When just throwing a little levity into the situation. No, for I real. know it's not the same for, thing, but can yeah. You, can you imagine your mom being like, uh uh, you look like a little asshole right now. You know, you don't get water. You get no more water for the rest of the time you in my house. All right. Like, I just can't just let, okay, but okay. <laughs> um, I, I'll have to look into that because what a ridiculous thing to do. I, I can't understand the logic behind that. Um, but they're so continue with the rest of your experience. So you said that everybody should go get tested, but what was it like there? Um, how were you feeling emotionally? What did you see? Um, I, while I was there, you know, the walk up was a lot. I was seeing a lot of people. I was really impressed by the multitude of different people. I saw white families bring in their entire family. So a father, a mother, and like a baby and like a, you know, a middle schooler all walking together. Like, obviously I saw plenty of black people. I saw Latino people. I saw Asian people. I saw a, a multifaceted group of people, which I thought was very, very powerful. And they were all, um, they were all just out there. And when we actually got there, everybody had different signs. We were all chanting together. It was super unifying. People had set up tents and stands where they were giving out free water, free food, uh, had supplies in case shit happened to go wrong. Uh, like you had a litany of people doing all the positive stuff. And then when we actually started marching, we went east on Beverly towards uh, La Brea. And, you know, obviously it ended up blocking traffic because we're in there. But everybody that was there either had signs themselves or were like honking in like solidarity and were chanting themselves that the, any of the chants we were chanting for George, for Breonna Taylor, for Black Lives Matter, whatever it was everybody was very very unifying it was very peaceful we were just marching down and, and chanting this stuff and that's it and i it was amazing uh i ended up having to leave because unfortunately um my state in this pandemic uh my money isn't always isn't right right now so i had to get to work i had right. to we could only go for a little bit uh it's once i got home that i heard all this shit that like they had met on the other half of the protest had walked a different direction and they had met against cop resistance and the cops kind of said they were they were literally just there sure they were still chanting but they weren't doing anything cops started yelling back started firing rubber bullets into the crowd and then there you go and i, I had a friend uh who was taping the whole time he was on the front line of it uh, who lives in weho and he sent it to me and it was it was horrifying because it was literally watching him they're just standing there <laughs> the cops start screaming and then shit broke loose and so again I do not condone destroying shit. I totally understand if you're in fear of your life that you're you're not shit is just wild. You know what I'm saying? That like you you can't take it anymore. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. So but I I I yeah. 
I hope that this doesn't squash it because I think the other thing that's so interesting is you have a situation where like people wanted to get upset about like, you know, kneeling during the national anthem as a protest. And I understand people feeling it was dishonorable or anything else. It was disrespectful to military. Again, Kaepernick himself had said that he got that information from an active Marine friend who told him that that was a, a way to show respect to the military instead of sitting because he started sitting and then had other vets actually start groups to say we support Kaepernick and what he's doing as well. But the point of a protest is to make people uncomfortable. It's to stop traffic. It's to make you think it's to whatever, because it's trying to raise awareness of something that's not working. And people got up in arms about that. So now that people are actually out protesting, even to the point that they've been pushed and been so broken that they're destroying shit, now you're like, well, don't do that shit either. Or people love to quote Martin Luther King. There's this photo going around and it pisses me off. That's like, he never, uh, you know, he never rioted, he never looted, and he changed the world. And it's he was always peaceful. And I was like, yeah, the last part of that is, and then he was assassinated. And then he was killed. He was and assassinated was for doing that. And that's the part that uh, the other thing that, that pisses me off is this whitewashing of Martin Luther King that happens because he may not have been Malcolm X with it where he's out here trying to like fight shit, but he, he like did everything that he could and got arrested left and right and got abused left and right. And then eventually got killed for what he was doing. So to pretend like Martin Luther King was just this God figure that came out and then he died peacefully of a heart attack after all his work was done and we should carry on his legacy is bullshit. Right. You know? I mean, we um, have a president who tweeted out, they start looting, we start shooting. I mean, that's what that is. That's a quote what, from what, somebody in a, from a uh, from a known uh, segregationist in the 1950s, um, and it was the same shit that was used during all that stuff. It was horrible. First of all, what happened to the punishment fitting the crime? I mean, what? How even is that our justice? That doesn't even work in our justice system, which is fucked up enough. But. It, oh, I saw that and was like, I can't, I go back and forth every day between whether or not I should look at his tweets, but I don't want to ever be able to claim ignorance, but uh, I look at them and I'm like, this is, this is a man that we put into office. Mm -hmm. How I can't relate to my neighbors sometimes. Like, how am I supposed to relate to somebody who did that? I, yeah. it, it's too, it, okay. M moving to better news though, because I will sure. say, um, yeah. For lack of better words, we are raising a fucking ton of money right now. Really? Uh, yes. So let's go into the Streamlabs. Um, okay. You guys are crushing. Uh, and I'll, I'm tallying up over here, but I just want to go a couple things quickly in the super chat. Um, 156 Impulse says, I was stopped by the cops. I was riding a bike with a sad face. Because uh, who knew that riding a bike was a fucking crime? Um, right. Preston Bryant, The Black Experience in Japan. Just did a three-hour live stream. Uh, the question of the stream was, is it time to leave America? They had a ton of different people on with different perspectives who live around the world. Check it out. I will. Um, wow. I can't even believe that's a fucking question that needs to be asked, but I definitely will check that out as well. Going into the stream labs, thank you guys for being in here right now and for being so incredibly supportive, starting with Lloyd Nance, um, who showed his support, and Lucas Shashek, who showed their, his support as well. Right. Um, I mean, we're, we're talking hundreds of dollars, if not thousands that's, right now that we're that's raising. That's amazing. I'll give you guys a total when we're done. Holy uh, shit. Uh, Glenn Caesar in here says, hey, uh, hello, Roxy and Winston. Thank you both for getting together and doing this show with all of us today. You're awesome. We definitely need the love and good vibes of community right now. So shout out to you all and the Rock Stars Band. I'm glad to be with you all. Glenn, thank you so much for your support. You're very generous sport. Um, Samir uh, Tesfai in here, again, with a hugely generous donation, says... Uh, white people take a look at yourselves in the mirror and make a change. We black citizens will keep demanding changes by any means necessary because we're fed up. Do your part, assuming you even care. I completely understand that comment. And again, yeah. people who take offense to that, uh, then maybe you are the one he's talking to, because if you can't acknowledge that you need to look in the mirror and do what you can right now, I'm certainly looking in the mirror every day and I'm growing and I'm not fucking perfect, but it, 
I my favorite thing going around right now is like you can't be silent. You have to fucking speak. You have to because it's been silent for too long. So yeah. I, I just uh, real yeah. quick, I just want to yeah, speak to uh, I should probably stop looking at the comments because I'm going to drive myself crazy. Most of them are very good. I just want to speak to uh, one that was saying that, you know, the peaceful route was a decision that might not have worked, but it didn't invalidate as it didn't invalidate MLK's ideas. I'm not saying again, let's just go out there and blow shit up and be violent. But let's look at a couple things. First of all, when riots happen and they're started by white people, if you've noticed, most of them have come from situations like your sports team won. And then all of a sudden, like Philly's on fire. Boston's yeah. burning. You know, you, like, you know how Boston loves to light cars <laughs> on fire when we win or lose. Yeah. So at the very least, that that the shit that's happening is happening because people are just tired of being murdered. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that violence doesn't become your first alternative. Like real talk. Like Roxy has said, this has been centuries, centuries of this shit. Right. So like are you surprised that at one point someone who is so nice and peaceful finally says at one point, I can't take it anymore? Because that's the thing. I, I got bullied throughout like elementary and middle school. And right before I ended up transferring out of that school, I actually finally snapped. And I went up to one of the people that was bullying me. And I was like, if you fuck with me again, I'll fuck you up. Like I slammed him into a locker and I said that shit. And I meant it. And that's because after years of name of calling being and being yeah. abused, I could not take it anymore. So I think that's the one thing that a lot of people are not keeping in mind with this to they're so quick to condemn people that are doing this. If now, if you're talking about the people that are literally anarchists and are out here just causing trouble because they know they can. Like Logan story. Paul. Did you see that? Oh, I saw it. <laughs> if that's what I don't you're know. I don't about. even know what he's doing, but like, I, it can't be good. I it just sounds, saw it trending and I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> It sounds like it sounds like what he's saying that he was saying that he was just there documenting it for all of his platforms and shit, um, which is a possibility. But the truth is, when you're there with all of your boys and all these cameras and shit in the middle of not the protest, but the looting. And you don't have goodwill with these things. I mean, come on. It's different if you. And again, I don't know what he did. I don't want to. But still, I, I saw his name trending. I was like, is this what we need to have trending right now? Because, like, I don't think so. It might, uh, oh, it's Jake Paul. It's Jake Paul. Oh, Jake Paul. Sorry. Sorry. I don't mean to clump the brothers together. No, no. I, I it's, It doesn't matter. They're the same person. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they are the same problematic fucking little white boys that made millions of dollars off of a shitty rap song. It's all day, bro, which is the worst song I've ever heard. Remember the Suicide Forest video? Whoa. So going back into the super chat, Larry Lee says Winston on a more positive side, go Cowboys. Sure. We'll take that support. We'll take whatever support we can get right now. Uh, <laughs> Shell's ghost with the super sticker. Thank you. Shell's ghost. Appreciate that. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Brandy in here with a massive hundred dollar donation. We appreciate that, Brandy. You rock. No comment, just the support, which is amazing. Um, Morse code Z says it seems like there's always something to bring it to the forefront, and then it goes away until the next something. Still, I really don't have anything I can add to this conversation, but today I can give a, a donation. Morse code, thank you for doing so. Um, we appreciate that. I, I want to throw in there too. Um, this the easiest way that I can describe this, and some people are going to get it and some people won't, but I hear me out and try and understand what I'm saying for a second. And a lot of this ties into, uh, like, for example, not all men at the example we used earlier. So are all cops bad? No. But here's the problem. The institution of the police force is it was built off of racism. It was a, the, the police force was initially started as a slave catching organization. That was the initial start of it. And that racism has kind of been prevalent. Now, there are plenty of good cops that exist. But the problem is, like has been said many a time, silence is condoning the oppressor. So when you have all these good cops that do not speak out against bad shit, you're adding to the problem because you're not stopping it. It's the same way that like, I personally get very angry with any black people I know that tend to be homophobic because you know, as oppressed as we are and all the bullshit we're going through to put that on another group of people is insane to me. 
It's the same reason I get very angry at white women that end up being super racist. Cause it's like, yo, everything you've been through as a woman and you can't apply that same empathy to another group of people, that shit makes no fucking sense. So when a cop doesn't speak up about the bullshit, it drives me fucking insane. And that's why people say, fuck the police. That's why people right. say all cops are bad cops because the good ones are not doing something. I What I do love that I did see was a number of cops actually in uniform marching with protesters because they realized we see what this is and it is bullshit. I give a shout out to all of those cops and I hope that they continue to not only be with the side of the people because they are here to serve the people, but that they will continue to call out this bullshit and stop it. That you're not going to stand there and let another cop put a, his knee on someone's neck till he dies. You're going to be like, he's down. Get off him. Put him in the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. That's like, why they need to be arrested as well. Because otherwise it won't change. If you don't think you can get in trouble for things, it's human nature to continue to push the boundaries. Um, and you can't, we can't just hold responsible just the person who is physically murdering somebody. It has to be anybody who allows that to happen. It has to, um, because I'm, I'm with you. I mean, watching that footage is like, I can't even, I can't even, um, going back into here in the stream labs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Uh, Matthew gold says, I am all for protesting your voice, but the looting is taking it too far. Matthew, I appreciate the support. Um, I, we've talked about this a lot on the show so far, but I know that you believe that that is true. I don't think that we can judge in this situation. I think, I think the biggest thing, cause again, I will say again, not yeah. condoning violence and destruction, but instead of concerning yourself about, cause this, this would be the issue. Let's say you had Corona right now and you were like, Oh, someone has a cough. So all you did was give them cough drops. You're not treating the actual like sickness. Right. So instead of worrying, I mean, if you need to deal with something immediate, cause like you're coding out fine. If it's a situation where like a building's been set on fire, put that shit out, et cetera. But how about we actually look at why it's happening? And if you deal with that, guess what stops? <laughs> All of this shit, like it will stop. Again, not okay that shit is like being destroyed, but right. let's look at why they're destroying it. That because, That is my issue. <laughs> because it does, it is horrible that things are being destroyed. But like at the end of the day, the truth is you can put glass over a building again. You, We can physically do that. You yep. can't bring somebody back to life. That is something that we are not capable of doing. Yep. Um, so think about it like that. Hopefully, Matthew, that that helps. But again, I appreciate your support. Uh, JMV213 says, no sensible person wants violence or destruction, but a lot of the rights we take for granted today were not given to us through peaceful protest. That being said, police have been the insti instigators countless times in these protests. I agree. And I, I, th that's the other thing that I love that people are pointing out. People are like, yo, this rioting and shit, this is bullshit. Like, it's not helpful. And it's like kind of like how you, people rioted with the Boston Tea Party and destroyed property because they wanted to, like, fight for better shit. Like, right. fight for better rights and not to be, you know, just right. put upon. I don't, I don't understand the difference here. Um, but it's but also like, if you are getting this outraged over the looting, then you better be getting more outraged over the death. Cause it's not, I don't see that. I see people being outraged over these buildings. And then you look at their social media and there was not one fucking post about somebody dying. So like, how are you going to be pretend to be that outraged over the glass and fine, if you are outraged over the glass, that is your prerogative. But then you didn't say one thing when somebody's life was taken. What does that fucking say about you? That you're racist. Yeah. Let's call a spade a spade. That's what that says. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, continuing in here. Still so many coming through. You guys That's keep amazing. on showing your support. We're making, uh, we're raising a ton of money right now. Um, and I really appreciate you guys showing up for this. Fifty Shades of Geek says, sorry that I can't watch the whole show live. Just wanted to say drip, drip, uh, zoobly zoo, and I miss the both of you on SEN Live. Thanks, Fifty Shades. Thank Appreciate you. that. Um, doesn't everything else seem so fucking trivial right now? Like I'm seeing, and this is no shade. I know that we need, I know that we need entertainment right now. So, oh, no, and I love the Schmodown. This is no shade on the Schmodown, but I, I recorded a promo quite a bit ago and it dropped yesterday. 
and I was watching it as I'm coming after Kate, and I was like, "This is not <laughs> what I care about today." <laughs> and, and, well, and that's it's it's interesting that you say that. I I got to give a lot of props to uh, everybody in the Schmodown world. Um, all of the all of the the fans have been great too. Uh, again, I've met some people that feel differently, but it's fine. Uh, but like to you know to you obviously uh Darina to um uh you know Andrew Guy um uh the barbarian but most importantly Christian <laughs> Winston with the most importantly and then he went out but most importantly Winston come back to us my dear come back to us uh Hopefully his video connection gets better. I'm looking at yeah. all of these. Uh, oh, back? there you go. That we're back. Of you course. go, but but like most fucking, importantly, I wish pause. I was doing this because this is kind of comedy gold in a certain it way. Is. But, it's not, but most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, uh, Christian and Mark. Um, they both they both reached out to me um, just to see where I was at. Uh, I had a long talk with Christian, who essentially was like, I don't know what to say or what to do i'm i'm scared obviously for my family and my children but i'm scared for like society i'm scared for i don't mean to giggle but he was scared and then he was frozen Oh boy, once with Wi Fi messing with us. <laughs> you went, there, we're back. We're back. I think. I think you went from you being the, scared you know to the, frozen. That's all good. You know, the sad part, Lewis Cox, who says my internet is terrible, is that I'm paying Spectrum for all their best shit, and this shit keeps happening. Keeps happening. I know. Uh, I know. I, I am paying all this fucking money. I don't have an issue like streaming Netflix and shit. No, uh, it's the upload. Game. It's the upload. Um, well, whatever. We get it. You think Christian and Mark are great. That with this right. we know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, exactly. The fact that they reached out was huge. And 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 it speaks a lot to the fact that truthfully, um, like anything else, the same way that we noticed that all of a sudden the anti-vaxxers got real quiet once COVID came out. And like that, a lot still of still don't the, want to vaccinate. Yeah, good. <laughs> but like it, it, the same way that all lives matter, people are being real quiet right now. Um, you know, they're they're probably louder when people start saying Black Lives Matter, but they were quiet when George Floyd got killed. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that we all see what you're doing in these moments, especially in the moment when you're when you are screaming out in pain and you're crying. You notice who comes to your side. You're very aware of who cares about your well-being and how they can help fix it. Have you been that. surprised at all by some of the people who haven't reached out at all or haven't said anything, any of your friends on social or just in general that you feel like have not been vocal? It, it honestly, I yes and no. I, I There were some that I was more surprised at some that did speak up. Uh, really? Uh, like pleasantly surprised? I was. Um, less so the ones that were quiet. Part of it might be because I'm a little distracted. Um, but uh, it's at a cab. Joseph is all cops are bad. It's it's a shorthand for all cops are bad. Um, the I'm, I'm I, I've noticed more people be like I should have said something earlier. This this is this stops. This yeah stop. I think part of it, to be honest with you, it's the times that we're in. If you throw in the fact that people are hold up, and you also throw in the fact that people are kind of fed up with the way that this administration has gone, generally speaking. Um a lot of people are more willing to say something now than they were before when their lives weren't necessarily being put upon. Yeah. Um, now that they, true. now that they feel this pressure, they're a little more sensitive to it. And I think a lot of them are giving more of a fuck about it. Well, it's a good time to give a fuck. So mm -hmm. wel welcome to the team, everybody who does. Uh, Eric says, FYI, there have been at least two other cops caught on video doing the same knee on neck as happened with Floyd. Lucky other cops stopped it. The sheriff in Flint, Michigan was awesome, though. Um, the sheriff in Flint, Michigan. What happened in Flint, Michigan with the sheriff? Do you know what he's talking about, Winston? I'm not positive. Is that somebody uh, who stopped something? Uh, I want to say he was marching as well, but I'm not positive uh, what happened with him. Hmm. I missed that one. So let us know, guys. Um, Preston says... We all need to understand that all this doesn't happen in a vacuum and we need to really start le uh, learning our history as black people and as Americans as a whole. 
What do you think about that, Winston? I, I agree. Um, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. I, 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 that's the thing. I don't have time or the the mental wherewithal to educate people on every single bad thing that happens to black people. Because some stuff you just have to push out of your head. So, like, for example, my sister uh, on her birthday a couple of years ago um, was doing a hike with some friends. And some 15-year-olds that, that lived in this, like, rich neighborhood because they were coming off the trail uh, you know, they were standing by her car and they started throwing shit at her and her friends being like, hey, N-words, like, get the hell out of here. Like, you're on our property and shit. And she was like, first of all, I'm parked on the street. And second of all, what the fuck did you say to me? Yeah. Um, like, you know, I was doing some courier work and I was getting on a plane and I uh, had my headphones and I accidentally bumped this old white lady. And I was like, oh, miss, I'm so sorry. And she's like, whatever, nerd. like said under her breath. And I was like, Whoa. like, people heard it. And we were like, what the fuck? So, like, that's the thing. Like, this whole... It just came out of nowhere shit like to someone that is not dealing with it this seems like you're just destroying shit to do so if you've been called that shit non-stop throughout your life if you've seen aunts uncles cousins brothers sisters get murdered over this shit like if you've if you've been like stopped from even doing the right thing and getting a good fucking job because your name is a little too ethnic you know what i'm saying like right. that's that shit that stacks up and I think that's the part that people are missing is that like, I, I think about a lot of those movies and shit where like you see like somebody is raid, like someone has turned, a good guy's turned villain and they're raging out of control. And they're so quick to like, well, put it, put it down. Like they've gone full evil. When like, if you went up and like gave them a hug and be like, it's going to be fucking okay. The rage subsides and all of a sudden you've kind of, you know, solved the problem. I know that that's like a fantasy thing that whatever. No, I hear you. I hear you. Away. But how about meeting us with compassion and helping out the pain? Cause and effect. Sure. Exactly. Cause and effect. And mm -hmm. people aren't giving credit for the cause causing the effect. Like this isn't fucking coming from nowhere. Again, another good thing coming though, Winston, we are, ma we are raising so much fucking money right now. I'm, I'm going back into this. I That's mean, crazy. like this is incredible guys. Uh, yes. So many comments to get through. Thank you guys for being here. Isak, who said always wanted to donate. Sorry if I came off bad. Isak before was one of the people talking about some of the good cops. Sure. Isak, this is a conversation that we're having. And I think it's important to, as human beings, we're allowed to come off wrong and then realize we came off wrong and be better and grow. So I'm, I appreciate that support. And I hope that we helped to explain today why this isn't about that. Um, and Thank you for supporting and listening and hearing us out. We really appreciate that. James Wheeler, um, I'm sorry I can't donate more, but I want to give what I can. Thank Everything you. that you can is enough. And, um, yeah. and I really wanna, appreciate that. I, I want to I share for those that aren't familiar uh, with Philando Feeds the Children. So Philando, yes. uh, this particular uh, organization, which is why I love it so much. Uh, so when Philando passed uh, a a professor and I want to say Valerie, which is mom, they started this uh, constantly running GoFundMe. Philando used to personally pay for kids to have lunch that couldn't afford it. So if he saw a kid in school that couldn't afford- Because uh, he worked at a school. Because he worked at a school. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he would pay for their lunches. And so Philando feeds the children specifically, uh, all the money goes to uh, doing exactly that, paying for lunches for kids to carry on in his legacy of what little stuff that he did to try and help uh, the, the kids in his school. Um, and so they they donate to mainly throughout uh, Minnesota because that's where he was from, but they do it any school they can to do that, um, that that's where they send uh, that, that money to to try and help kids that way. So especially knowing a lot of kids that haven't been able to eat since the pandemic broke, since they got sent home. And that was the only way a lot of kids knew how to were able to eat. I, I, this is a cause that has been very close to my heart. And I'm just glad to see that we're raising all this money. This is this is absolutely wonderful. I, I think that, that I'm so glad that you told us about this because I didn't know. And I think that because it was in 2016, we need to do everything we can to continue to remember and honor people's legacies that deserve to be honored. So I'm so glad that 50% of this is going there. Uh, Sally Mercedes with the support. We appreciate that. Thank you to Sally for that. Um, going down here to film DJS just wanted to help however I can. Um, thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are too fast for me. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all of you. Um, sugar gum said, 
I'm black and Jewish. Oh, Winston, it's like me and you combined. Uh, I'm black and Jewish, so all types of oppressed. You guys really didn't uh, have to do a stream, but it's amazing that you did. Black Lives Matter is not a political statement. It's a human right. People finding a hard time making making a stance are blowing my mind. I agree, Sugar Gum. Um, And thank you for your support in here. To Lloyd Nance, who just sent a heart uh, and a a massive donation. Thank you, Lloyd. We really appreciate that. Uh, Garth McMurray, who says, I shared a post from a black man who only walks around his neighborhood if he has his dog and one of his daughters with him. That uh, with them, he's a dad walking his dog. But without them, he's a single black man who has seen his danger and he worries for his safety. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen something going around. Um, but Garth, thank you for saying something. Yeah, it was that one. That one. That one hurt me. But it actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, I enjoy running around in like a a, a Goku outfit because I'm me. But right, I'm very aware of the fact that like when I go for runs, even prior to what happened to Mont Aubrey. I would intentionally wear loud, nerdy, outlandish shit because anything I can do to further prove that I'm not a threat, which is bullshit that I have to do that. It's fucking know, insane. But I know, but I know the insane. world I live in. So right. I intentionally will wear things like that because, nah, that nigga likes Goku. Nah, he ain't, he ain't doing nothing. Like, ha Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. I'm, I'm literally oh, that having that. to diffuse the situation before we get there. I mean, it's the same way that you see a lot of women when they leave you know, work late at night, they have their keys already in their in their hands. Yeah. Just in case they like, you know, it's a fucked up world that we live in, but like we do things to try and, and mitigate damn like danger. You know, that's, that's essentially what it is. Is it's just, it's what your parents taught you when you were growing up and doing everything you can. I mean, it's not fucking right, but it, unfortunately it is smart. Um, going back into here, um jmv213 says slave patrols are the foundation of modern police so it is an inherently oppressive and racist institution one good cop doesn't change that and a good cop shouldn't be a thing it should just be the standard we need reformative justice i know that is true because like we can't hold cops to the same standard as everybody else they need to be held to a higher standard because they have more power and you're a police officer so i i I feel JMV on that comment. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Em- Embrace your geekness uh, says the videos I have seen have made me sick. So many examples of bad behavior. It drowns out the positives that are also out there. We have a systemic problem starting at the top. Love you, Roxy and Winston. Thank you for being the great people you are. Uh, thank you for that massive donation. Embrace your geekness. Appreciate that. Um, and also coming in from Jake Yacovetta with a huge hundred dollar donation in here wow, as well. Thank, thank you, you Jake for that. Um, Garth McMurray says 99 years ago today, the Tulsa race massacre happened. Winston, I saw you posted about this. I know how many people I, I know. I know how many people who didn't learn about it in history class. They learned about it from an episode of Watchmen TV series. We need to change the history books to include all the facts. Love to all. Garth, I didn't know about it until um, Watchmen. I didn't, I didn't either, and that's and that's sad. And as much as I I find myself studying Black history because obviously, um, I, no idea until I saw the Watchmen episode, and then I found myself doing research on it. And I agree that that has a lot to do with stuff we talk about all the time. And that's what I'm saying, that you get to this point because you don't take care of the little things before. In the same way that if you don't take care of your, your body and like exercise and eat right and go to the doctor, all of a sudden when you get sick, sick, everything falls the fuck apart. Right. And it's kind of the same thing. That's why we shouldn't need a Black History Month. We should just teach Black History, black history. properly. Right. Just right. Teach it properly throughout the year and know about the the you know Black Wall Street massacre and know about all of the shit that has happened up until this point so that we don't we aren't here you know what i'm saying like we yeah. get to this point because we're not taking care of the things we need to take care of yeah because i felt embarrassed that i didn't know and then i and then once i did know i was like how the fuck could my school have not taught this to me i mean how how can the it's just that's insane and we need to, we need an overhaul of the entire fucking system adam collins in the super chat thank you for doing this episode winston roxy i hope everyone stays vocal and stays safe all my best to you both 
Thank you, Adam, for that. Appreciate it. Um, Lynn, let's see, Lynn, Lil Nate ain't, Lil Nate ain't. Oh, that's cute. Sending good vibes from Canada. Take care. Eh? Oh. <laughs> As a Canadian thing, right? That's what we do. I don't even know how to say it. That's how yeah. American yeah. I am sometimes. I, I, it's all good. I want to. I want to bring up another uh, solid point about um, uh, just about this going forward. And and a lot of people, what I do appreciate is seeing the number of allies, especially white ones, that are coming and they're asking questions. How can they help? How can they do what they can, etc. I think there's something very important to keep in mind. So. As we move forward going through this, none of this shit is just gonna magically change overnight. And even if it did, a lot of people still are gonna have a lot of PTSD from all the shit that we've been dealing with forever. So that being said, if you have a black person, if you're talking about black issues, a person of color talking about any sort of minority issues, same thing if you were talking to men, if you were talking to women, whatever, whatever the situation is that you're doing, be very sensitive to the fact that if you ask a question, first of all, that person will talk, we'll use black people right now. Black people may not actually take the time to stop and educate you and tell you. And it's not their responsibility to do so because A, there is information out there. If you would like what you may ask them, which is probably better for you, ask them what resources they can look into because there is sometimes false information. If you want to do that, that's a lot easier and they can point you in the right direction. Um, but just understand people are fucking tired. If you notice your teachers when you're at school, they teach you in class and they have office hours, but a lot of them do not want to necessarily hear other questions outside of that because they're fucking tired because they, they need a break. And right. to that point, black people, a lot of us are not teachers. We are not here to actively educate and stuff like that. We do this shit because we don't have a choice. So be aware of the fact that you can ask and they're not doing it because they're taking it personally and they're not saying no because they don't want you to know they may just be fucking tired. So respect. So Winston, if, you are okay with people asking as long as they know that you might not want to answer mm -hmm. or might, might not be able to at it's, that time or whatever. So it's okay it, to ask, but it's also okay to not have your question be answered. It's reading the room. And it may be that they will never answer that question. It could be that they can't answer the question at the time, but just understand like anything else, if you ask, someone may say no and you need to be okay with it. And that doesn't mean that you then give up on your query that means you need to find another way to go about it. So it's a matter of in the same way you should be respecting black people physically by not letting this shit happen to us and letting us get killed. You should also respect us emotionally because we're we're tired. We're just very, very tired. Hearing you even just say, who the fuck knew that respecting somebody meant not letting them get killed? Like that's the definite, uh, what, a low, <laughs> what a low fucking bar for respecting somebody. Mm -hmm. How about we just don't let them get killed? That seems mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Brandon Hanna, friend of uh, Schmodown in this show. Brandon Hanna in here with a massive uh, donation. Thank you for the support. Creech68 with a big donation. Thank you for the support. Nikki Therese with a donation. These are all massive donations, guys. Thank you for the support. Um, Mason Allen just sending a heart. Thank you for the support. Um, we see every single one of you guys, and this is huge what we're doing. Um, Glenn Caesar. Huge donation, he said, because I just felt like the first donation wasn't enough. Um, well, if you can give, then do. And Glenn, thank you for that. Creech again with another donation, Creech68. A lot of these donations don't even have a comment. You guys are just giving, which is amazing. Um, Smith Zad with the donation. Thank you, Smith. Appreciate that. Colin Dana, too, who says, love y'all. Uh, back at you, Colin. And also I see that Colin put in a donation in here as well. Glad we can help any way we can. Appreciate the support in both places. Um, and Michael K with another hundred dollar donation That's amazing. who said, thank you, Roxy and Winston for setting up the live stream. I don't know what else I could add to the conversation that hasn't already been said, but I want to help the cause in any way that I can. Michael, thank you for that. Um, you are, and that means the world. Uh, Winston, there's still more. There's more. Can I keep going? Yeah, please keep going. I, I was, right. The other thing I was going to say, like someone yes. in, the, in the comments, you know, I'm gay and I don't mind if somebody asked me about it. I, that's fine. I don't mind if people ask me, but like, for example. To each their own. To each their own. But also, hear me out. A couple that like on Friday, I had reached my limit. I literally could not deal with this anymore. I needed to be not in a world where I'm constantly feared for my life. 
So I turned all of that off. I didn't read social media. I wasn't posting about stuff. And if somebody had asked me about that today, I would have been like, not today. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just concerned about doing something nice for my girlfriend because it brings her happiness, which brings me happiness. It's all I want yeah. today. And yeah. so that's the thing. I'm not saying that all black people will say no, and I'm not saying that they should, but you just need to respect people's space and time. Sometimes you are not in the headspace to deal with certain things. I had a question for um, a black friend of mine this morning, actually, that I had been looking for answers for. It was very specific to this one person, too. Mm -hmm. But I had been looking, couldn't figure it out. And so I prefaced it with, it is not your job to teach me or educate me. I don't know this answer. And if you do not have time to explain it to me, then no problem at all. But here's my question. And I haven't heard back from her yet. And that is absolutely her prerogative and totally fine. And I'm going to keep working to figure it out. Yeah, a um, thousand percent. And I, I respect you for that. And I thank you for that. Because like, just for me as an example, part of what finally pushed me over the edge other than everything else, like a couple weeks ago, my aunt died of cancer. She'd been fighting for a while. I lost a cousin earlier last God, week to, to, to COVID-19. I lost a cousin to COVID-19. So like, again, Sometimes I'm just not in the headspace. You're not in the you're not in the fucking mood to educate people mm -hmm. at that time. It yeah, just depends. Um, in here, Samir Tasfai says, "Thank you, Roxanne Winston, for raising funds. It's needed and much appreciated. You both get W's today. <laughs> Hashtag Schmodown and uh, peace and love. Hey, I could use all the W's that I can fucking get right now. I will take them where I can get them. Uh, this is a much more important W to me. I have to say." Let's go to Big Mo's movie review. We need to all unite as people to battle police brutality. Good police officers need to stand up against it as well and join us in our protest. Big Mo, very true. Um, thank mm -hmm. you for that support. Appreciate it. Also in here, Fanboy Cantina says, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Much love to you both. Um, thank you. Also, I'm, I'm loving the Fanboy Cantina handle. Appreciate that. Uh, the prince that wasn't promised. Thank you for this amazing support. Hatred is not okay. Love each other. We are only as good as we treat each other. Much love during these tough times. I stand with George and Philandro. Uh, thank you for that. Appreciate it. The prince that wasn't promised. Huge, huge support coming from you. I'm like you, Winston, right now. This is us. Just like not in our heads. I, 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 I'm, I'm blown away, honestly, just because like, obviously with the standard day-to-day -day stuff, like I'm very aware everybody only has so much money. Everybody's dealing with some stuff. So I know the, the kind of stream process, sometimes you see good days, sometimes you don't, it just depends on what it is. I am absolutely blown away. Like, I don't even know what the number is, but I've seen enough hundreds, two hundred. I know I'm trying to, this is, this is, look at my, <laughs> I grabbed this piece of paper sent from the gentleman as I'm trying to, can you see, this is yeah, me yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. chicken scratch. Like, <laughs> I, I will, I'm going to go through and do the actual number after so that not one thing is missed, but yeah. I just want to be able to give you guys some kind of count of something by the end of this. So I, We'll, we'll see, but it's literally like you guys are, this is incredible. I'm um, speaking of big Mo again. Thank you for the show. Winston and Roxy hashtag black lives matter. Uh, wow. Just massive, massive support coming in. Lewis Cox with the big support. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, marking it all on my, my chicken scratch pad. <laughs> uh, and I guess shout out to the gentleman for being the only piece of paper that I had near me on Yo, here. You got an extra copy, man. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I haven't seen it yet either. When we're, when we're not quarantined, come on over and, oh, this is good. Cause I never gave them the shout out that they needed for sending this to me. So, uh, black lives matter. And he, <laughs> the gentleman with all of the, uh, yeah. All right. Well, there we go on that one. Eric says, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Much love from across the pond here in Norway. Oh, I was wondering what NOK was for um, dollars. To, so you guys are Norway, huh? Pretty cool. I'm, I'm appreciative of you guys streaming all the way there. What time is it in Norway? Probably pretty late. Going back into the stream labs. Oh boy, still so much more going on in here, Winston. Um, I yeah, hope you yeah. got a little bit of time. You got to bounce whenever yeah, you got to bounce, but yeah, you yeah. guys are crushing it right now. Um, uh, PC says, I remember the riots of the 90s. I was a kid and scared. Nothing has changed. Hang in there, Roxy and Winston. We support y'all. Um, 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I don't think it's me that um, we're supporting right now, but I appreciate you supporting this stream. And uh, I, I don't remember a time. I mean, Winston, what is, I don't know how exactly old you are. Were you, you weren't here for the riots in the nineties. I mean, I not in LA. No, I was in Dallas uh, and I would have been too young to really know what's going on. I'm sure my parents were talking about it and I was off playing Nintendo because, you know, right. kids don't know. And you would hope, you would hope that, parents are able to shield their kids from that stuff directly and just kind of let them know. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's getting up to that level a little bit. Um, maybe worse because like, I, even though riots were happening around the country, uh, it was mainly a lot of it focused here in Los Angeles with Rodney King. Um, so to see it happening in Atlanta, in Minneapolis, in, you know, LA, all over the place. I mean, I think there was stuff in Dallas too. Like that's, that's, you know, that's some real shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, watching footage of then and now and watching, like seeing all those uh, pictures pop up. It's like when you can't tell the effing difference and we've, we've progressed, but we really freaking haven't. Um, it's so hard staying in here with the stream labs, going to our dear friend, Emma Fife, um, amazing support from Emma. Thank you. She says, love you, Roxy and Winston. Thank you for having this conversation. Thank you for being in here, oh, Emma. Yeah. You rock. Um, Than says, want to help be part of the solution and throw some money our way. Thank you so much, Than. Uh, appreciate that. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, then going to one, two, three heroes. Okay. Let's ask this question. Cause I'm reading anything that comes in for support. The uh, question people are saying that people are losing their jobs because their jobs are getting destroyed because of the riots. What should the people do knowing they don't have a job? Um, well, I don't know that I haven't heard anybody who's lost their job because of the riots. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure it exists. Uh, yeah, like for I'm, example, I'm sure the people target, for example, the one that burned down, those people who may have gone to work the next morning are kind of shit was turned sideways. So if you want to use that as an example, um, that's the one thing about all this that like is rough. And again, I acknowledge is that, that that's happening, but depending on what the situation is, it will correct itself. Uh, so like if you work at a target and say that target burns down, they'll, they'll transfer you to another one or something like that. Like there are right. little things like that. Um, so I would say don't, you shouldn't have to write it off. Your pain is not invalidated. Like losing a job is a huge fucking deal. Trust us. Both of us know after this year, fucking uh, sucks. <laughs> but, but it's, it's a scenario where. I wouldn't directly uh, like get pissed off at the at the situation that made it happen. I would be more concerned about how we continue to fix stuff because it will. See, there you go. Those the, thanks the, the to Dwayne, uh, who is the reason that I have a microphone. So that thanks for multiple reasons. But Target said those employees will be paid in full. There you go. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, Thank you it's for updating us on that. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's stuff that I hate to see that, that that makes me super fucking sad. And I'm actually noticing a number of black people going old school Black Panthers with it where they're standing outside of black businesses like armed being like, so when looters show up to be like, not here, get the I've fuck seen, out of here. I've been seeing that too because it's their right to bear arms. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the whole thing is that that's so interesting is that I do not blame anybody that is out there trying to in that regard protect their property because the thing that's even more just, just, just like just heart-wrenching uh when i think about those la riots back in the day there was a num people were burning their own neighborhood and so then right. the issue is you could see that small like that dude that's owned the barbershop for years that that like that is all his family has as a legacy he gets burned out and they can't afford to rebuild like that's the shit that does destroy me. Like I'm very aware of how traumatic all of this shit is. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, uh, you know, I do. So I do. It's it, and I I guess the the other way I look at it, honestly, and and it's hard to do it sometimes. Um, you know, someone put me onto the fact that the Hulk is essentially like a, a black man in America, where like he ended up in a situation that was fucked up, and he is constantly being hunted and pissed the fuck off. And then when he finally rages out, they're like, oh shit, it's a monster. He's destroying everything. And it's like, well, again. Well, no, yeah, but no hunting, shit. You're constantly hunting him and calling him a monster and then confused when he turns into one. So right. like, 
it's that weird situation where there, there's there's a plus and a minus of it, especially when you see the Hulk, for example, taking his rage and focusing it, just like you see in Avengers. You know, the secret is I'm always angry. Boom, turn instantly, destroy destroy the villain. It's kind of the same thing. I know a lot of black people that like they make Black Lives Matter. They make that movement because they're angry and they want to do something. I made positive black people news because I was angry. Because you want to do something. Do something. That's literally why we're. I'm doing this stream right now. I'm. I, I am not black, but I am fucking angry, and I want to do something. So that's. So we're, we're we're doing something, guys, and we are doing it right in here. So many things still pouring in. Uh, I'm obsessed with you guys. Sally Mercedes says, "Want to make sure it's seen. Everyone, do your best to not burden friends of color, pay people of color, consume slash share their content, listen and learn." Um, thank you for saying so, Sally. We appreciate that. J Dog says, "You can't have a solution without a revolution." Um, yeah, I think that it's. Uh, oh my God, I see Winston frozen, and I know he has a response to some of this stuff. His internet will come back, and he'll just respond to everything at once. Um, but I'll keep going through some of these with you guys right now. There we go. We got him back. We got oh, him back. Shit. I knew you had comments. Uh, I, heard you, I heard you just vamping, like, "Yeah, yeah, no," and and Winston's frozen, and he, I know he wants to say some shit. But he'll say you it. No, Winston <laughs> wants to say stuff. You know, uh, Big Mo in here. Uh, this is a huge moment in our nation. Our voices will be heard. I'm glad I can help in any way. Hashtag George Floyd. Hashtag I can't breathe. 2020 has been a terrible year. I don't think there's a person on the fucking planet who can deny that this year bites donkey dick uh Ooh. Ooh. don't just don't you Ooh. think Ooh, yeah God, you know, that, and, this, this feels so terrible Bite you know, donkey dick? yeah don't you think to the mouth. <laughs> I, know, I know i know uh this one coming in from big mo latino for black live matter uh love that i've been seeing that hashtag going as well thank you to Big Mo, you have to see my chicken scratch right now, Winston. It is <laughs> this is insane. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I can. Brandy Parker in here. If you cannot donate, do not feel bad. Just listen, learn, speak up, and check on your friends. There are other ways to support. Brandy, thank you for saying that. I agree. And I, I want to add one more thing to that. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing that people can do, if you want to figure out how you can really fight this fight on even if it's just on your particular level so you're not a national activist that's out in these streets right you don't you're not you don't have the money to do stuff you know what you do you don't not go to thanksgiving dinner because you don't want to deal with like your racist family you go to dinner and you educate and correct right. your racist family because the problem is if you if somebody doesn't check them and that family member happens to be the one family member that's that's the racist cop and is going to put his knee on someone's neck guess what ends up happening you end up with a situation where they fucking do that shit. And now what is just their rhetoric that they were getting gaslit up by, they were just getting fueled up by people at home. They think that they're okay to do that shit. Cause like, I think about uh, the fact that a, what his wife, uh, the cop's wife, I don't know his name and I'm not going to say it cause fuck him, but his wife is li leaving him. She's, she's filed for divorce after this. Uh, but I think about, and I, this is why I didn't fuck with Amy Klobuchar. Klobuchar, not only, there's a case with a, a young black man who's in jail where there's corruption all over the place. The cops apparently had paid off certain things. Evidence didn't check out. Eyewitnesses, all sorts of shit came out. She won't push to have the case reopened. Another situation when she was prosecutor, this particular cop that just murdered George Floyd had 10 separate cases brought of police brutality that was escalating. And they she refused to try him ever. And just like you see a situation with domestic violence where it starts off with abusive words, then it starts striking people. And then the next thing you know, you always hear it. One day this is going to end way worse than this. One day she's going to end up dead. He's going to end up dead. And this is exactly what happened. This guy was not checked. No one called him the fuck out. And then he did the ultimate evil off of it. So, right. so that is so what I show up. Show that, up and educate people. That is what I ask of my white allies all over the board. When they ask me what they could do, Stop just defriending those racist aunt and uncles on Facebook. Call them the fuck out and continue to re-educate them so this shit will stop. It's the only yeah. way that this stops. Um, I I agree and I appreciate that, Winston, of you telling people how they can help support because what I'm sick of is people saying, I don't know what I can do. Then look, because I've been there too. Like, what can I do? 
and then you fucking figure out something to do. So he's telling you what you can do. So you can't claim now that you don't know what you could do. Um, Austin in here, Austin Kramer says, I know this is a serious topic, but I love when sentences start with that. I think we could use some levity. Did you guys hear about the guy who took the train from Lego yep. land in the mall America <laughs> and drove it down the street during the riots? Oh, no, I didn't well, hear this one happened. I didn't see that one. What I saw was that while people were looting Target and shit, there, there were two things that killed me. Uh, and there was also a looted cheesecake factory. All three of these destroyed me. So there was a white lady who was a target. You see people with TVs. It's just while this lady had three lamps, like she had struck gold and was just hustling out of the fucking target, this white lady with her lamps. Yeah. Uh, there was another Jeez. white guy at the target where same thing. You see people grabbing food and all sorts of shit. My dude went and got the largest Lego set he could find and was hauling ass because he was <laughs> like, I can't believe I got it. Yo, Le last Legos week, are expensive. And my, my dude got the largest Lego set. And this one that, that both Sally and Emma are talking about, the Cheesecake Factory. They are, they are, they're like, you know, looting is happening. They're raiding these stores and shit. And then they see, they see this one lady in full mask with a full cheesecake just strolling out. And the people being like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't know where she got the cheesecake from, even though Cheesecake Factory is being raided right now, but she is taking a whole cheesecake, ladies and gentlemen. She is walking away with it. <laughs> like, I, done that shit destroyed it's me. like i want to be upset about their priorities but also you do you if you want that cheesecake during this time fine whatever i mean i'm not really in support but uh it's fucking funny and i need the laughs right now so i appreciate that nicholas <laughs> vintage 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 sorry i butcher names for a living you guys know Thank you for doing this today. You guys are doing a wonderful thing. Appreciate that, Nicholas. Um, and you're doing a wonderful thing by showing your support. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Julian says, insane what is happening in the USA. Hope you get rid of the top maniac somehow so some semblance of humanism can return to society. Love from Germany. Ah, God, I mean, we have an option to get rid of the top maniac, but I don't know that it's the best option we've ever had, but at least it's a different option. We are in such a fucking... <laughs> Well, and that's that's even, that's even why I said when, you know, Klobuchar, you know, again, with her history of not dealing with this shit, um, when she was being vetted for VP, I was like, for the love of God, do not let Joe Biden put her in because after everything that happened with his whole, you're not black if you're, if you you know, if you're not rolling with me and shit, the last thing he should do is then get someone who is infamously known for not helping black people out. Like he would have lost so many black votes off of that shit. So it sounds like she took herself out of the running and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So Elizabeth Warren. Oh, I know. Elizabeth, say it with me now. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> Warren. Warren. No, I know. I, and I, I agree with you. I think Elizabeth would be wonderful. Uh, I actually really like Tammy Duckworth, to be honest with you, especially if we need to try and pull people yeah. to the right. Mm -hmm. Her military service and her like very staunch, I think would be great. Uh, I go back and forth with um, I go back and forth with Harris um, because she has a similar record to Klobuchar. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't realize uh, that. Where she just she prosecuted a shit ton of black folk. Um, the only thing that I will give her credit for is she is actively doing stuff now to try and undo some of that damage. But that is something to be kept in mind. Um, so like, there's like I'm very aware. This is this is I I, I jokingly not joking. They seriously said that you know if Trump is is racism classic, then you know Biden is diet racism. But like, <laughs> but but. I don't know why I laughed because it's not fucking funny, but yeah. But it's but it's the truth though, in the sense that like, I mean, look, soda is bad for you across the board, but yes, technically diet coke is better for you than regular coke. I it's guess. kind of the it's kind of the same thing. I'm not I'm not thrilled. I am not thrilled about the situation that we're put upon, but I am very aware of the fact that while Biden may say dumb shit, he doesn't say shit that incites violence. Winston, are you ready for this next round of donation support? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's fucking go. You guys are amazing. Sean Tipton with that $25. Ooh. We appreciate you. Thank you for that. Ryan Payne in here uh, in the Streamlabs. I really appreciate the real talk you guys are having right now. My sister is currently at protest in San Diego. She was also at one yesterday. 
where it led to two banks getting set on fire. I'm proud of what she's doing and everybody stay safe. Much love. Ryan Payne, thank you for the support and hopefully your sister stays safe. Um, JBZ in here with the support. Thank you. JMA80 with another $100 donation um, coming in hot, guys. Ace Money saying, are you guys seeing this stuff Anonymous is dropping online about Trump, Epstein, and Princess Diana? Uh, I, I didn't know about Diana, but I saw the Epstein shit. I started to see some stuff. Uh, what Winston, what exactly is going on? Uh, Anonymous got his 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 books, got his little black book with all yep. of the, the 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 names of people that flew on his charter plane. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that like Black Twitter has been losing their mind is that uh, what I think it said Michael Jackson and Chris Tucker were both listed on that. Now, mind you, this doesn't necessarily mean that these are people that had anything to do with the. Yeah, I saw Chris trafficking. Tucker. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the human trafficking because it was known that Epstein did charter a plane to Africa for a fundraiser that happened. So it's possible that some of these names are just people going to do legit stuff. Uh, and we know that Epstein worked. We know that Epstein what? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> worked to work to get back? You're here. You're here. You know that, that, Epstein. that Epstein like associated and worked with a bunch of different people um, uh, that were in powerful positions because Naomi right. Campbell was also on that list. Right, it, I saw that her too. trending too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. again, until we know, will I guess Will Smith was listed. So like that's the whole thing. Until we, until we know specifically what each of those things were, like yeah, they're on the list, but we don't know. You know what I'm saying? And so it's bad, but it's not. We don't know. <laughs> so, who you? yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's see. What did Eric say here? Some golden nuggets. Uh, guy stole a police horse. Guy stole a SWAT van. And that black guy commentating everyone looting made me LOL. Oh, oh, oh. Did you not see that? So there was somebody literally. No, doing I saw this. Shit. Yeah. yeah I saw this. Like, oh, shit, son. Right out. I God. will say there, there have been. You have to try to find the humorous moments always in life. Mm -hmm. And through my fucking mountain of tears in the last few days, there have been some moments that have broke the tears up with like, that is fucking funny what you are saying right now. So uh, bring, bring on the LOLs. Cause I know that we need that right now too. Uh, Prince that wasn't promised says the most inspiring thing to come from all of this has been seeing police officers and chiefs marching alongside the protesters. The only way to end up police corruption is when good cops decide to stand up. Yeah. And I also saw a bunch of protesters. Did you see this image, Winston? There was a one police officer who was separated from his um, squad and then people that were part of the movement were all surrounding him and a group of like seven big black guys, like, like just built all built, all made a circle around him to protect him um, and wouldn't let anybody through. And I was like, that was a, such a beautiful image because he, he wasn't doing anything for them. And they were like, no, we're going to protect this guy. Cause he's alone. Um, I, I, my, my, this is the thing that I, this is the other, you want to know what else you can do. Here's, here's a big thing yes. that you can do. Um, Share more of that. Um, yes. I cannot. I cannot reiterate how many times on top of that. Do not share the videos of George getting snuffed out. Do not share the video of Ahmad Aubrey getting shot for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I I say that on the one hand, I do think that a lot of white people need to see that because they're not aware of what's going on. But you also right. need to keep it in consideration when black people are twenty four seven seeing another example of a black person being killed just for existing triggering it, is it, not even a strong enough word i'm it sure it takes a massive toll so for example i posted today um oh god what did i post uh, 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 uh oh the, the guy being bit by the dog by the cops i didn't post the autoplay version of it on twitter i posted the news article so i gave a warning if you want to see this you can read the article and the video is here but I am actively not posting the video to just play because I am not trying to re-traumatize people. Right. And, right. I, and I, that's a big thing is that if you must show, like if you feel it's your duty to show the George Floyd video, then share an article that someone can then find what they need. But do not just put it on your Facebook feed or your Twitter feed because you do not understand how that can completely fuck somebody's head up. I appreciate you saying that because I know people who feel who are sharing that are just not informed. So mm -hmm. it's important mm -hmm. to inform those people. Um, and like when I posted about it, what I said was I'm watching every single video so that I can stay 
so that I can't claim ignorance, but I did not share those videos. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I think it's important for people to know that they, sh that they're out there and you can watch them, but you're right. It's not something to be shared um, because it is again, more than triggering. It's Salad how far we get des desensitized. That's the big yeah, thing. Yeah, that's true too. Like mm -hmm. video games, people have been relating that to like when you see too much of it, that I mean, not that this is a fucking video game, this is real life, but it seems like that when you see it over and over again. Um, I see, Salad Von Baco um, with the $25 support. Thank you so much for that salad. Uh, that seemed like a weird <laughs> sentence. Thank you. Thank you for that salad. Thank you, salad. I, look, I've been trying to say thank you to salad for years. It has yeah. not worked. That's why I cannot drop this weight. It's fine. I get it. <laughs> thank you, salad. Uh, Brandy says, like and share this video, people. It's a great conversation. Brandy, thank you for that. Still so many more things. Winston, when you have to go, you head out because I know no that worries. I told you we'd be done so much longer ago, but we are still receiving so much support right I, now. Honestly, the more that we're actually here... Um, doing something, the more that we keep raising this money, like I'll, I'll stay as long as I physically can, just because uh, this is huge. This is, yeah. this, is this, I'm, I'm seeing at least the super chat side of things. And this is huge. And, and this is what we wanted to do. I wanted to come on with you and talk about this and educate people how we can. But I, but the minute you told me we were going to raise money, I was like, fuck yes, let's do that shit. And this, I, I, I sent you cool. that message last night that was like, I want to, I wonder if we can do something tomorrow to help. And then I was thinking, and I was like, you know, I don't always think the solution, I think usually the solution is going out there and doing something yourself, but sometimes the solution is financial and you guys are, and it's not the solution. It's one but of it's the 50 one of things we can do. It's, yeah. It's equally as important. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's equally as important. Um, Cause that's the whole thing. You need the money to actually get shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. To, get, to get your permits, to get the supplies, to to hire organizers, all that kind of stuff. It's all it is all equally as important. So this and for for George, this goes to his family, and that's something that's very important too. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead, Winston. No, no, no. Um, um, I just see someone ask. They just hopped on about the charities. I mean, real quick, the one of them yes. is the George uh, Floyd like kind of funeral fund. Uh, and then the other one is uh, Philando Feeds the Children, which uh, is an organization that in the honor of Philando Castillo, who used to pay uh, for kids who couldn't afford lunches at school, he would buy their lunch for them. Uh, there is a foundation that intentionally raises money to donate to schools to do that, to pay for kids who cannot afford their lunches to be able to have lunches and whatnot. And right now, especially, that's so important because there's so many kids that are not eating right now and they need that. So I'm, I'm really glad that you brought awareness to that fund for me, Winston. Thank you for doing that. Big Mo's movie review. Winston, did you hear Killer Mike speak? I did. Hear I did. This. I did. You did? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was phenomenal. And I, I highly encourage everybody to watch it because if you want to see the epitome of someone who has been a very vocal activist, um, both acknowledge the looting and the, the rioting and, you know, saying he, in in both stances literally saying please stop this please stop burning your city but also i understand and him saying refocus so i i, I don't want to mess up his words he says what uh organize uh mobilize and, and re-educate whatever he was saying he was essentially saying come back together and and attack this the proper way but he never that's the thing he doesn't condemn the people doing the looting or the rioting. He just says, I get it, but let's attack this a different way. And I think that that is acceptable. The people that immediately just go, well, why are you just destroying shit? Mm -mm. That's not what it is. That is not what it is. You right. Know? Yeah. So. Van Cohen here said, awesome. Thanks, Winston. Hope this helps. Black Lives Matter. Thank you, Van Co, for that. It does help. Um, every bit helps. And thank you guys. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. This is one of my favorite handles ever. Tongue Punch Fart Box says, <laughs> I just want to know, how are we supposed to protest? Kneeling? Nope. Hashtags? Nah. Marching? Wrong again. Shut up and play basketball. No one wants to hear that in your acceptance speech. Blacks kill blacks anyway. All lives matter. We're just tired. Yeah, I think they're just going and quoting some of the things that really ignorant and hateful people say. Um and yeah, I I agree. I saw Trevor Noah. I don't know if you saw this. It was actually on TikTok. People have been doing some very insightful 60 second TikToks uh, right. in the last right. few days. But he was saying like there there is it's all a, a bunch of people who don't know what it's fucking like telling people who do know what it's fucking like what how they should do something. And it's just I, insane. 
I think the thing, the hypocrisy that gets me and drives me crazy, and I'm, I'm going to knock on wood, but I'm assuming a pause is coming at some point because the internet thinks it's funny. Um, I find it very fascinating that people were out protesting the stay-at-home orders, which are in place not to actually be like, screw you, black man, fuck your life, like, you know, to these white people, like that there are people with assault rifles walking up to government buildings protesting that they can't that they have to wear a mask and they can't be outside and that their business has to be closed so essentially some shit that's like bad but most of it being a big inconvenience there's no tear gas there's no rubber bullets there's no right. attacks etc but the minute then black people are marching stop killing us black lives matter that all of a sudden it devolves into police attacking uh, you know, protesters. And it's just very interesting to me to see the two in counterbalance. And if you ever wanted to see the hypocrisy up close, those literally happen within two weeks of each other. Right. Like, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's not like it was something that like, then if you want to compare it to riots when, you know, Boston burns or Philly burns, like, you know, that happened years ago, right? This is something that literally happened two years ago. And one is an inconvenience and one is an actual fight for like life. And the one that you're fighting for your life, you're seeing violence. And the one that you're seeing where it's like, I don't want to wear a mask. Like, you know, they just got to walk around with their guns and then go home. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, good. We got to the end of the point where you said that's crazy before you froze. Um, oh, and, and you're back. Yay. <laughs> thank you, Internet. <laughs> I was going to say thank you, Internet gods. Uh, and, and mostly because I was looking at this from Punch John <laughs> Savage. He says, thank you for doing God's work. I don't know if we're doing that, but we're doing people's work right now. And uh, you guys are making that happen. So thank you. Matthew Gold says, Stephen Jackson's speech definitely was moving. Did you hear this one, Winston? I didn't, but I know that Stephen Jackson, uh, that was like his adoptive brother is the wrong word, but like essentially a brother to him. He was a major part of his family. So I know that that really hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, punch drunk. Savage. Again, thank you for the support. Huge, huge support. Appreciate that. Van Co said it also helps that yes. Killer Mike is saying it and not someone who isn't black telling black people how to deal with the trauma. Yes. Yes. What do you think yes. about that, Winston? I yeah. a thousand percent agree because he has been on the front lines fighting for black people to get their just due forever. He was a huge Bernie advocate. He was one of the few people that was challenging Bernie on a lot of his stuff when he was not addressing black people. I think Bernie fell, fell in a trap a lot of the time of kind of letting Killer Mike speak as like his black friend instead mm -hmm. of like adopting a lot of stuff. I think that's where you were seeing disconnect for Bernie with older black folks. You saw a lot of younger black folks would rock with Bernie, but not older. Um, but but Killer Mike has been on the front lines helping guide and regulate a lot of this shit. So I think that there is not a better person that could have spoken up at this time to be like, please stop burning Atlanta. Like this is our city. Because the other part that he brought up, he brought up is he's like black folk. This is like black American Mecca. If you destroy our city, what the fuck do we have? You know, and yeah. I think that, that was super, super on point from him. I agree. And I'm glad that you think so. Going back into the Streamlabs, Kristen Rose says, Roxy, this is really fantastic ally work by giving a voice on your platform to black people. Uh, Winston, it's also nice. To, Winston is also nice to look at. So that helps. <laughs> thanks, baby. Winston is nice to look at. Oh, uh, thanks, I, appre I appreciate that, Kristen. Thank you for the support. Amy T says, Okay, um, this is interesting. As an Asian American, I feel conflicted because there's a lot of anti-Black sentiments within my family and broader community, and I feel like I'm not doing enough. Sending love and support to you, Winston and Roxy. I think that kind of goes to what you were talking about before, Winston, about fighting back. Um, and your family is still your family, but you cannot, you can disagree with what you're saying and you can do that vocally. I mean, I'll, I'll give an example because it, it's the same thing that I deal with all the time. So I do not tolerate, uh, God damn, all this love, ladies. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Emma. Uh, <laughs> I need to I need to shave. Jesus. A, a friend told me he was going to get me in a, in a Dollar Shave Club commercial because he works for that product, but they have shut down. So I'm like, they need to hurry up and do it because I do not like all of this just forest growth i uh, <laughs> can't even t i don't even know what the fuck is going on anymore with this so i can't even comment on anybody's hair <laughs> um but yeah my my big thing is i don't tolerate and i won't sit around for people within my family doing bullshit or saying racist things or sexist right. things or homophobic things so like 
uh, for example, like I had, I, you know, I studied abroad in, uh, in Japan and I had a buddy from Japan come visit for a couple of weeks and he came to like a family dinner and my cousin just no experience with Asia whatsoever, just being real kind of ghetto about it, kept like saying things that were just like, so, so y'all just be eating dogs or like what happened, blah, blah, blah. And I had to call her that look, look, you need to fucking stop. Okay. How about the rest of the time? Just be quiet and just let him be here. And if you want to ask me questions, you can ask me questions, but like this needs to stop. And that's the thing. That's all like she got pissed at me and she tried to push back. And I was like, you don't understand. How would you like it if you went over to Japan? They're like, so y'all just like grow watermelons in your backyard and shit. Like how, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's the whole thing is just, it is about holding the people that you have any sort of influence over accountable because then, yeah, because I don't have influence over them. So I can't just tell them what's going on and whatever. So that's, that's where it comes down. So if you're asking what to do with your family, you're going to, I'm going to be real with you. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a fight, but I guarantee you, I would much rather trade places and do that fight for you. And then you come be a black man. And like, and that, that's not a knock on you or anything else. Like you can do it, like stick to your guns and stop, stop the people that you know that are adding to the problem. And this is where education really does matter. And if you do have the strength to teach your friends and family, because like, you know, my grandparents are 92 and 94. So they've lived through a lot of different times and different words were appropriate at other times or inappropriate. And they didn't know, but like, especially when it comes to Asian culture, you know, I, I had to sit my grandparents down this last year and explain to them why the usage of the word Oriental is not appropriate anymore. Um, I don't know that it ever was appropriate, but why? And they were like, wait, so that's not what people said. I mean, just no awareness. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes with families, it is ignorance and sometimes it is hatred and you, you have to try your best to explain why if you can, because you might be able to actually help. Um, so I, I appreciate the support in here, Amy, and do whatever you can. And being here is a lot. So we appreciate mm -hmm. that. Rob K in here with the support. Thank you, Rob K. Um, again, from Tongue Punch Fart Box. <laughs> uh, thank you, Roxy and Winston, for this. Conversation is where it starts and hopefully can move forward with some positive solutions. Love you guys. We appreciate that, Tongue Punch. Is that a good nickname? Tongue punch. <laughs> um, also in here, sugar gum says, so sorry. I can't give more. Please protect the faces of protesters, multiple people in iconic photos during the Ferguson protests um, have mysteriously died. The man who filmed Eric Gardner is in prison for filming the murder. Be safe. Um, I have seen this Winston and I, I am curious your thoughts on this. A lot of, my friends who have been at the protests have said not to post pictures of your own face there because you might get in trouble later on. Have you experienced anything like this or how are you handling the situation? I mean, for that exact reason. Yeah. I, I personally um, was very careful about trying not to show my face. I think the other fucked up tactic that's happening a lot, you're, there is reports that ice was getting called on a lot of the protests and, and trying to put people in that direction and stuff like that. I think that there's, there's Yikes. a lot there's a oh. lot happening with that so i think that that's the thing and and again that to me is also where education comes into play you in the same way that you don't just you know uh let's say you were to join the army they don't just immediately throw you into a battle like right you know, even yeah. even even in the horror movies we've seen where they're like do you know how to shoot this thing and like they at least try and teach them a couple tips on how to use the gun before they go i would highly suggest before you find yourselves going out into what has essentially become uh, a war, not just because of the violence, but like when you're protesting, bad things can happen. Let's be mm -hmm. real. It's a protest. Mm -hmm. you're, um, know your rights, have an emergency plan, uh, have the proper supplies available. So milk, for example, if they're shooting tear gas and pepper spray, milk is very good at, at helping counterbalance that. Somebody from Chile had actually mentioned if you put water with baking soda in a squirt bottle, you can also use that to kind of help stuff out. So like know what you're getting into and what the worst possible scenario is and how you're going to handle it and then go out there and just be safe. And so that is a very big thing. Yes, you are seeing people that if they if too many faces are seen, they, the cops are using this in retrospect, especially if they see you around a particular area that something gets vandalized or something. It's the same way you see idiots that will, you know, I, there was a couple of like uh, uh, like rappers who were also drug dealers 
who like uh you know had illegal weapons and drugs and drug money and like their video they were yeah we doing this shit like whatever and the cops came and arrested them because they're yeah. fucking idiots and it's public domain shit so do anything you can to be safe uh and, and essentially that yeah so many more comments coming in. Uh, I don't even know how to express my gratitude for you guys right now. So I'll just keep on reading. Uh, Derek Blaney says, sad that police are attacking media to intimidate them from covering their violence against protesters. You, you saw that, right? You saw that. I mean, there's been a number of yep. arresting media, but I think the big one that stood out was uh, in Minneapolis. They arrested the press. was like, I'm press, I'm press. And they're like, you need to move. He's like, okay, great. Where would you like me to move, officer? And without giving a response, just proceeded to arrest the entire CNN team yeah. while they were still live. Um, yep. And that's that's a whole nother thing that's kind of terrifying is that there, you already see the cops that are in regular mode that are doing this. There are some cops that genuinely are excited about moments like this because it means I do get to put on the battle gear and I do get to boss people around and all this other shit. There's a video going around where there was a cop standing there and they were like telling him to back up and he starts licking his fucking lips. Oh my God. He's excited oh. to like get, get to work. Like it just, it, it oh. is, it is something to be said. Yeah. Omar uh, Jimenez. Yes. Omar Jimenez. Uh, I believe he's an Afro Latino. Uh, he was the reporter that was arrested, but cameraman, they were all arrested as well. Um, more so, comments coming yeah. in, Winston. More comments coming in. Uh, Halatia Mealy. Sorry again. I butcher names. A little bit of support from Finland. Thank you, Finland. Yes. Um, and I know a lot of people have commented that this isn't just a problem in America. And that is for sure true. Um, so I appreciate help from around the world right now and the support. That's It's amazing what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. Mayra M says, I understand the reasons for protesting and supporting it, but destroying businesses is a step too far. Uh, most of the businesses I businesses are either black owned or employ black and other minorities. I'm reliving the LA riots all over again. So Mayra, we've been talking about that on the stream today and I do appreciate the support um, that you are giving right now. Winston, any, any further comments on this about the protesting yeah. and destroying? Yeah. You know, if you guys haven't noticed from either this or SEN or blurs, I love to talk in metaphors because I think a lot of times it's easier to digest stuff. Um, I think a good instance of this would be a situation where like if you had a kid and say your kid, uh, you know, ended up in a bad situation with like the law, like maybe they, you know, ended up murdering somebody or something like that. I know that's really dark, but let's say that that happens for yeah. most parents. They don't stop loving their kid. They can be extremely disappointed and they can be scared and they can be like, why would you do this? And they can be angry about it, but they still love their kid and they do what they can to try and protect them. Right. Um, this is another one of those situations where we don't condone people destroying other people's property. But again, as much as you want to say, like, it, it almost feels like, I know this is on a different level. It almost feels like whenever, like, uh, you know, someone is assaulted, they're always like, well, what were you wearing? Well, you were drunk, like whatever else. It's like, yeah, but don't right. like uh, something egregious fucking happened to this person. It's the same thing with the people that if they are out here and they are burning shit down, I'm not saying you don't hold them accountable for that shit, but like you do understand that that's coming out of pain. They're not doing it because they just want to destroy shit. They're doing it because there's just unchecked anger that has been let loose. So I, I would strongly encourage people before they immediately jump to, well, but now you're whatever. Yeah, we're aware of that. We're very aware of what's happening. Like, let's actually help those people that are that angry. You know what I'm saying? Like, worry about that. Right. Um, and I guarantee you the riots and shit will stop. Like, they will stop if people are not in this position in the first place. If people stop dying, there are no riots. If if murder stops, this isn't happening. So I that's the point that I keep hitting home. And I mean, like, on any kind of metaphor, this is the uh, on, like, the most basic level ever. But, like... It's like, it's like when somebody, if you, if you, it's not like this, but anytime I think about, okay, somebody cheats on you and then you're angry and, and you throw something and they're like, why'd you just throw that? Well, you just fucking cheated on me. So I threw that cause I'm fucking pissed, but that's the stupidest example. But anything you can think no, of in your life, one. when somebody does something to you and then you react and then they call you crazy, but they did it. So yeah, and that's I, and that's, that's the thing. I, I, I again, 
I, I, you know, I, I, it was something that I had heard. I actually see that that Kristen said something in the in the chat that they intentionally um, did try and put the protests in LA in more uh, majority white and affluent neighborhoods for two reasons. The first, to make sure that you were minimizing the damage to black neighborhoods because that has a tendency to happen. The protests happen there, and then they just destroy their own. We destroy our own neighborhoods. But then the other part of it was that white people can't ignore it if you were literally heard, outside their door. Yeah, you're you, right there. If you are outside their door. They cannot ignore your voice. Damn right I am white. And damn right this happened right outside my door. And I was like, way to go. Roxy, is- Roxy was like, oh, Black Lives Matter. Right. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> right. totally. But like, no shit, you should go to Beverly Hills. Yeah, because you cannot be you cannot be ignored. So, yeah, I, I appreciate everybody commenting on this. And again, this is a, a conversation. We are speaking about this. So I appreciate, Mayra, you opening up about your concerns and us talking yeah. about that. Vanco says, my girlfriend's family are racist. And whenever I speak up about their racism, she gets the brunt, oh, she gets the brunt of it. I don't know what the right thing to do is there. It's tough. Um, it is tough. And I would say it's one of those things, and I, 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 I've said this a million times as well. I still think that people, Winston, what do you still think? He said mother, it a million times. All mother, right, you're back. You're back. Okay, all right. You've said um, it a million times, and now you're going to repeat that you, it that again. You, that you should be the ones to check the people you have influence over. But I also think that there's something to be said about, you know, how they say you put your mask on before you help somebody else. Yes. If yes. it's a situation that every time the situation gets broached, if like her actual mental or physical sanity is, is in danger, then take a big step back. But I would I would strongly urge that you never give up that fight for two main reasons. One, if you don't think that every black person you know, as much as, because we all, every black person I know, except for people that are self-hating and that's from oppression, loves being fucking black. I, I love it. I love my community. I love the culture that we've cultivated. I love the general support that has a tendency to happen. But if you don't believe for two seconds that most black people, if it meant that they would not have to worry about any of this trauma ever again, wouldn't potentially be like, cool, then fine, I won't be anymore. A lot of us would walk away from that. So when someone that is says- so sad to hear though. It, it, it is, yeah. but it's the truth. If I could not be hunted, I would much rather not be hunted, whatever that meant. Yeah. Um, so then the other thing that's so interesting, it's why we get so mad at people who cultural appropriate that love to be all about hip hop and shit. So like, it's, I think the term that Paul Mooney uses, everybody wants to be a nigga, but nobody wants to be a nigga. And that essentially means like, you want to dance hip hop and love all that shit. But the minute shit gets real, you are nowhere to be found. You don't want anything to do with the prosecution that comes along with it. So if you, I would say, don't stop fighting that family in the sense that like, just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Do not put yourself in, in, in serious danger. If you are about to have a full mental breakdown or they're going to physically harm her or you, get out. That's that's fine. Get away from it. But you push and you push and you push because at that point, again, you were fighting for the right thing. You are probably not necessarily fighting for yourself directly. You are fighting so that your family does not go and hurt a black family, so that your family does not go and hurt an Asian family, so that your family does not go and hurt maybe a it, family. Like, maybe you know? your words ring true at some point. Maybe mm-hmm. it affects them. Maybe they hear you. Maybe. And you got to keep fighting. I agree, Winston. I love your words. Um, Anthony Crotty says, just off a stream with an English streamer, and she raised nearly $8,000 for wow. NAACP on her stream. As someone who lives in Ireland, I can't comprehend what is happening in the U.S. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Um, so I just calculated part of where we are at, because I still have to go back Um and Super Chat will take a percentage of this, but I'm going to do the best I can to get every penny that we can. So currently, with my calculations, we are at over $2,000, $2,017 that we have raised, wow. um, which is fucking incredible. And we are still going as support is still piling in right now. Um, so I'm just wow. going to keep on looking at what's happening here. And I'm just so impressed by you guys right now. Thank you for showing up. The prince that wasn't promised. I know this is not relevant, but check Twitter about Epstein. This is giant. Um, all right. I'll, I'll take a look real quick. All right. While you're looking, I'm going to continue to read because uh, <laughs> like, look at this Winston. Well, while you're trying to, let me see, let me see. Yeah, the gentleman just all over the fucking place. <laughs> because when I started writing, I didn't think that we were gonna. Wow. Okay. Wow. 
Um, all right, Johnny. So, oh, so go here's, ahead. here's a good example. Uh, so in downtown Seattle, uh, so people, again, are loving to say that it's all black people out here destroying and all that kind of stuff. Um, Jay just posted a video that was actually on the news. A white lady came in, walked into a Nordstrom and busted that shit open and walked out with a shit ton of fucking clothes. You know what I'm saying? So like to put all of that simply on the protests and the rioters is wild to me because like, uh, like again, that lady that went, I know she had the full mask on, went and stole a goddamn cheesecake. And again, we find it funny because it's a cheesecake. I know. It's not, and it's not actually, it's not actually funny, but it's still like, the, no, she's funny. just out she, there trying to live her like she's like yeah, I have her priorities in order she was like i need to get this cheesecake real quick but <laughs> but i i um but it's 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 kind of that you know what i'm saying it's like the fact that the, the shit that happened at the grove the only building that was set on fire was the police station ban thing they have at the grove and then a bunch of white people again that caught that on video raided ray-ban raided nordstrom like busted it and told oh stole God. a bunch of shit you know so oh boy Oh boy. Uh, Johnny. Yeah. You keep trying to look Johnny Petritza says I've been up for 24 hours watching this unfold from my home in Adelaide, seeing positive videos of peaceful protests, but these videos of the chaos hurt. I understand protests, the pain and frustration as much as an Italian boy can. Uh, Johnny, thank you for your big donation. And yeah, I've been up too. I've been up and watching. And um, I think that, yeah, uh, thank you from that Italian boy for this conversation. I know you've got another one coming in here. He says, but the attacks need to stop. That's why I'm donating. Maybe this small amount can go towards healing the pain. Um, yeah, but like Winston just said, I mean, when you say the attacks, they're not. It's not coming from the same people who are peaceful protesting. There's there's a there's a number of videos that came out. There was one that they I don't know if they proved if he was an undercover cop or not, but like you had the whole protest walking, and a, a white dude who had an umbrella. He held a hammer in the umbrella so you like on the handle so you couldn't necessarily see it. He was walking up to random windows and smashing them out, and then somebody caught it on video, and a bunch of black protesters were like, "Yo, bro, what are you doing? Like, stop, stop destroying! Like, what? Stop!" And he just got away and then started threatening with the hammer, and then eventually like took off. So you have people that are out there actively trying to sabotage. Them. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen so many videos of that that it can't be ignored. Jonathan Donsell, thanks, Roxy and Winston, for today's video. You're welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for the support. Glenn Caesar, um, uh, sending – Okay. Y'all are the best. As I said before, I'm proud to be a swagged out rock star alongside <laughs> you all. We're proud to have you. Thank you, Glenn, um, you for Jonathan, always supporting. If you go above <laughs> Jonathan's comment, uh, Myra – she said that she was upset because her friend who's black uh, lost his business last night. They had just reopened last week because they started to spread out from the Grove. And again, that shit, that shit is fucking tragic and it's that super sucks. fucked up and that should not fucking happen. And I'm so sorry that that's the case. And again, I do not condone this wanton destruction. I'm right. only saying that I get it. That's, that's it. I'm not, I am not saying that people should be out there destroying shit, but I get it. But also, I'm not put upon the fact I've seen enough evidence of clearly certain shit being staged to try and paint this the way that it is. I also would not be surprised if they, whoever did that knew it was a black business and they were up to starting trouble. I'm not surprised by that either. You know what I'm saying? So like there's, there is a lot of just really, I think that's the other time. The other thing about this time, we're just going to see it's going to get darker before dawn. You know what I'm saying? And and we're seeing a lot of that shit happen. Um, and I do hope that we find a way to continue to move forward without causing more wanton destruction or heartache. But again, if what we're calling this is a revolution, if this is the direction that we're moving, let's let's be smarter about it. Let's be less violent about it. But if it happens, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know how I to do. I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Ca still cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah that's not the problem and fixing that will only put a bandaid on things because it's not the problem. Um, but it is a problem and that sucks, but it's not the problem. Yeah. Paul Barrett in here said, uh, with a massive donation, I just wanted to send support from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Ben M in here with support. Thank you to Ben in the Streamlabs. streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Nikki Therese showing support in here. Um, thank you again to Nikki. I've seen her name pop up a couple times. Uh, Mark Woodvine, 
This week broke me. Hope this helps. Thank you so much, Mark, for that support. Anthony says, thanks, Roxy and Winston needed this today. Thank you, Anthony. Really large donation. Appreciate Ooh. that. Ooh, found um, out what happened with Epstein. What happened? So apparently Anonymous released court documents that Trump and Epstein were both defendants in a child rape and sex trafficking lawsuit. So this whole where people kept saying Epstein didn't kill himself and all that. And they're saying that Trump and others tried to force this the fuck down. So this was actually, I guess, a sealed case where Trump was a defendant in a child rape and sex trafficking lawsuit. So, whoo. I don't even have the mental capacity to deal with that at this moment. Like, must look into, and I will, but what the flying fuck. Uh, yeah. That yeah. is our president. Holy that shit. Is. And that's, yeah, no, and someone someone mentioned just some other things that they saw of just like negativity and people trying to be set up in Dallas. Uh, somebody put a stack of cinder blocks around where the protest was going to end up walking and someone was like, hey, this was the protest. They tried to put these bricks here so you'd pick them up and throw them. Don't fall for it. Like they're trying to set you up. Someone yeah. else showed me a video of the multitude of cop cars that were graffitied and smashed out here in Los Angeles. Again, protesters came up to, to the line yeah. of broken cop cars. They didn't grab them and destroy them. They walked up to them. So like, there's a lot, like you have to be very careful about everything that you're ingesting and seeing and understand that like, to put all of this on the protesters around the country is completely wrong. There are people that are taking advantage of this, both inside that and out. And there are people that are genuinely mad they're doing this, but you have to understand that there are people actively going out to fight. The, the last one that someone mentioned too, there were two white ladies who were spraying like Black Lives Matter and fuck the police, spray painting it all over buildings. And some black people came up and were like, hey, please stop that. I know you potentially mean well, but you're not gonna be the ones Make, that get in trouble for this. Yeah, you're not across. making us look good. The ladies were like, it doesn't fucking matter and flicked them off and kept doing it. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's the other thing that people have to remember that this, this is, there's a lot going on that we're not getting a chance to see and shit. So yeah. Uh, Weston Ira in here says it's too late to read this probably, but just dropping in what I can to support the cause. It means a ton. It's not too late to read it Weston. Cause here we are continuing to go. Uh, because you guys are amazing and, and the reason this is continuing. Mike Riley says, people aren't mentioning these agent provocateurs like the umbrella guy at AutoZone who looked like a plant. If I'm a looter, I'm breaking shit and running away. What? Wh who looked like a plant? That was the guy I was talking about. The guy that was, he was a white guy. He was in all black. He had like a gas mask on and had the oh, umbrella and oh. holding the hammer. Yeah, okay. he, would, he, would, he would walk up to random buildings. He started with AutoZone and just started smashing all the windows out and people called him out. And then he tried to like not run, but like briskly walk the opposite direction. And people just followed him around to try and figure it out. And then he started threatening him with the hammer and shit. It was a lot. Big Mo's movie review uh, says Jake Paul was shown looking in an Arizona mall. I think that's maybe looting. And we, we were talking about that earlier. He wasn't actually shown looting. He was shown standing by looters. Uh I guess that'd be the best way to describe it. Right. Winston. He, I mean, yeah. he was there while looting was happening. So we'll see what takes place there. Um, I know I haven't gotten to any of my patrons, but I don't have time to ask your questions necessarily. Um, but to Garth McMurray, Weston Ira, Glenn Caesar and Robert McNeil, who are all in here um, who just have questions for Winston. I'll get to those at some point in life and, and have him answer them. Um, but thank you guys for showing your support. I really appreciate that. And I think that we do need to get out of here. We've been going for two hours. Um, so let me just make sure I'm not missing anything as we're getting out of here. Uh, Winston, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you, you guys at home. I mean, this is freaking incredible. Again, I'm going to have to do a full tally with everything, but I really do believe that I we will be donating about tweet. 2000 freaking dollars, which is just so incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, Haskell said my friend who's the head chef at the Smith in New York city and their other six locations, both Smiths in DC and the one in Chicago looted and destroyed last night. I'm so sorry for your friend. I that, man. That's, that's um, I've actually been there before. Great restaurant. Um, hopefully they have insurance and a lot of insurance will take care of what's happening right now. It, it still is. So I'll, horrible. I'll yeah. say this is the last piece to all the rioting and, and looting that's happening. Yes. And I, again, it is fucking awful what's happening to everybody in that regard. Um, I hope for the people that that is the thing that you're mainly focused on, that 
if this even shows you a small semblance of the hopelessness that sometimes it feels like to be black in this country, I hope that that's a small thing that can help encourage you to try and go out and help solve this problem. I'm not saying that this needs to be an eye for an eye situation. I'm not wishing any sort of ill, but I, what I hope is instead of going straight to anger and rage, that all of a sudden there's this weird level of like, fuck, like, oh my God. Um, because that is what tends to happen a lot for that's why there's so many that is what their day-to-day -day life is. They feel like their life is constantly in a state of being looted and robbed. Um, right. and so that's all I, that's the only thing that I hope and I wish, I, I wish nothing but safety and wealth and fortune for everybody and, 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 and health. And, and that's what I wish, but I also hope that this is a, a moment that we all learn from and we really do go forth and make changes to the way that we live our lives. Winston, is it cool to still say ditto? Because ditto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. everything you just said, so, so poignant and true. Um, another one coming in from Glenn Caesar as we're getting out of here, the hashtag swagged out rock stars are the absolute best big time salute to you all. Thank you to anybody who's watching this after the fact, if in the stream labs, you just write to me and you say that this is for support, um, that you are giving this as a donation, then I will include that in the final count and I will let you guys know. Um, on tomorrow's stream. But since the last time, I mean, there's been hundreds more dollars coming in again. I know that YouTube takes their percentage and whatever, but I really do think we're looking at 2000 bucks that we are going to be giving and support. So that's amazing that you guys were able to do that. And I swear every single penny, um, every, I'm, I, I already said that, but none of this is going to me or to Winston for today. This is um, for two amazing causes. So thank you guys so much for, for showing your support. Oh, every time I try to get out of here, you guys continue to be genuine, uh, generous. Mayra says, sure, I believe I there are anarchists who are taking advantage of the chaos. I didn't I mean agree. all protesters, a small group of who live off I, chaos. That's true. Very I true. Com I completely agree, Myra. And I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't trying to, to come at you or anything like that. I just, yes, there are people that genuinely whether they want to do it as a smear campaign against black people at black lives matter or just as as uh michael cain said as alfred in in the dark night some, some people, people just, just like to watch the world burn. burn i know and that's what the, there's a number of people that are doing that who knew that that would be the most poignant uh line of the whole freaking film but mm -hmm. i i always remember that and i do too it's hard to watch when that seems to be true. Um, okay, guys, we are getting out of here. Winston, uh, I know that you said you're starting up your show again, so they can Please. be looking out for that. Yeah, um, right. Where can they support all the things that you're doing? So two two quick things. Uh, the Swaggy Blurred, T-H-E-S-W-A-G-G-Y-B-L-E-R-D. You see it right there uh, below my name. Uh, that is the handle for all my socials. So Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you follow me on any of those, I will make the announcement about PBPN and when we're coming back. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, you can also my Patreon, patreon.com slash the swaggy blurred, uh, you know, really all that money really just goes to helping me be able to do this stuff, uh, one way or the other. But, uh, I've been talking to Jay. I think what we're going to do, um, on Tuesday, we both kind of agree. We're going to probably do a town hall on Tuesday. So instead of kind of going full stories, we might do a couple here and there. We're just going to sit there. We'll, we'll, we'll we will get some rest so we're ready for it, but we're just gonna kind of field questions and kind of talk stuff out. So we wanna continue this conversation going there. I know talking to Roca uh, tomorrow, we're gonna be discussing the NFL, making a statement how they think all of this is wrong, which is hilarious to me. Oh my God. Went, after everything that happened. So I'm gonna I give my that. thoughts on that shit tomorrow. So oh. definitely watch game time if you can. Um, and and just last, so tone deaf it was unbelievable oh my god amazing i saw it and i literally guffawed i was like oh. like i was like what bitch? I, I thought it was a piece from the onion i literally was like no Seriously. this is not real Oof. um so so you can find me there and and just be safe and 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 take care of people take care of people take care of people i cannot i cannot emphasize that enough check in on your black friends in the same way that i was saying that you check in on everybody during the pandemic, which we're still in the middle of, please continue to do that. But uh, more so than ever, please check in on your, your black friends and family because we are going through it right now. And I guarantee you, some of them may not be saying it out loud. They may not be vocal on social media, but they need someone to make sure they're okay right now. 
Samir Tisfai uh, says, drip, drip, rock stars. Appreciate that, Samir. Um, and yes, again, in my least cool way of saying it, ditto to everything that Winston said. I think that you, uh, you're you so amazing, Winston, and I really appreciate you continuing to fight and to show up on the stream today and to help raise as much money and support as we did. Um, you know, to Philando and to George, this one's for you guys. And um Rest in power, gentlemen. Rest in power. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow live at the Roxy. RB3 will be on tomorrow, which I'm really excited about uh, him joining the show. So RB3 tomorrow is our guest. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thank you guys so much for being here and for all the support. And to Winston again, round of applause for you. You're incredible. Um, And I'll see you guys tomorrow.